disclaimer. So what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? I'm trying to get on the Slice Style Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, wait, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio. There we go. Are we good? We're good. Al, I can barely hear you, but I think my, I've got, I think, the worst hearing. Do you? Can you hear me? I can hear you in and here. Can, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Everybody yeah. can hear me. Hey, everybody. <laughs> we're, uh, we're live at uh, Canna Crawl, and uh, it's actually a lot busier than I, than I expected. Lots happened in the last couple days, Al. Oh, God. <laughs> Just a little, eh? I'm a little, uh, it's a little a little heartbreaking for the city. Most, you know, for those who don't know, even though today is 420, which is an amazing day that uh, we're, uh, we're celebrating liberty and democracy for the most part. Yeah. We also have uh, a little, little sadness in that uh, Gunjanistas the other day was closed down. Is that what happened? Well, you want to you wanna say this? Paula. Paula is here with me. Gunjanista okay, is here. Paula doesn't want to talk. But, you know, she's, she's had a hard week. And um, basically what happened is on Wednesday, uh, the police came in and uh, shut us down. And uh, all we were doing was rolling pre-rolls for Thursday's Hope. So you were, you were giving away... You were you were only gifting. You weren't selling yep. cannabis. You weren't Nothing. doing anything illegal. The uh, uh, natural green healing, yep. was closed uh, two months or more ago, and uh, we were looking at other avenues to help patients, and uh, we were in the process of. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to say we're we are in the process of of uh, having a glass shop for those who right? uh, who can't see glass we got- shop. Paula, yeah. look at, what's that? We're, we're in the process of turning things into a head shop, a glass shop. Oh, really? You know, and an education center where That's people excellent. can come in and, and find out information about Synergy and, but and they sh- all you're, these you're other You're still going to run Hope, though, right? Yes, Hope will be done on the street corner for now. So do they not let you into the building? Is that what? We can't get in the building. For how long? We don't know. Jack is working on it. It's very strange, you know. One, like, HOPE, which, by the way, is the Hamilton Opioid Prevention Experiment, experiment yeah. uh, which I think is, is, is amazing. For those who don't know, what they attempt to do over at Gunjanistas is those who have an addiction to opioids can come in, have a place, safe place to talk about it, yep. talk to each other. And uh, uh, having a community of people who understand each other is really important probably the most important thing is having community and then what they do is you can use your cannabis instead of using an opioid yeah. and uh, at Gunjanistas they were giving out free cannabis to people that had an opioid addiction in, yeah. uh, in the attempt and the help of getting them off of uh, off of opioids and, and you know we, we, we've got a group of about 20 people that have I been coming I can't hear in. you at all Al. I'm going to speak louder then We've got a group of about 20 people that have been coming in regulars. And that tapered off because of, the, for, because of the winter. We were just starting up again. I mean, people were coming up from their campsites in the forest to get even one day's relief. Really? You know? And uh, it, it, it's, it's a truly a shame. We've run into a few of our, our Hope people today out and about. And... Uh, they don't know where they're going to turn. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, they came out of the forest. That's actually literal. Yes. They uh, live behind the... Down at the tracks, the tracks down, in the, yeah. down in the woods. Yeah, there's a bunch that live together. And yeah. There's a whole community down there. Yeah, there's a whole community yeah. there. Yeah. And, um, and that's unfortunate because I think you were doing a really good job. So, you know, you have my support. The, you know, from the medical side, that, I think you're doing a wonderful thing. I don't think you need to have a doctor all the time around to t- have people talk to each other. 
That's uh, so. I, I just don't understand why. Like, how did they know? Like, the police had to have come there. Why did they even show up there? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, lounges. Is the Hamilton Vape Lounge still open? I I believe so. Yeah. Right. So, I, which is great. Which is amazing. I think they're here. I was just gonna say, where is he? <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, they are? Yeah. So, I mean, so I don't understand. How do they even know where... Like, I get dispensaries closing down. I get that. I don't, Like, you guys are just a, a lounge. So, I don't understand what they were even doing there in the first place. What Paula said, they didn't realize that natural green was done. I mean... So, they thought you guys were still natural green? I, I guess so. And all, we've just... We've s- switched our... Our sites to education or medication, as we like to call it. What did you call it? Medication. Meducation. No, I know what you're yeah. saying. I'm trying to understand it. Like medical education? Yeah. You know, med ed? Med ed. That's a good one. Yeah. That's what we. we med ed. So, yeah, that's like medical school. Med ed. Med ed. That's what medical yeah. school was. You know, Ira. It, uh, you Gun can, You know, one of the things I love about you, bro, is because, you know, you are a real doctor. You're in the cannabis community. You're supporting our efforts as well as helping patients heal. And to have somebody of your stature say, hey, wait a minute. You know, this is not right. We're sitting here at a can of crawl. And it's a market. Yep. And uh, quite frankly, they could walk in the door at any time. Yep. Uh, Over the last 24 hours, there's been raids going on in Nova Scotia again. Uh, I believe they shut down two more dispensaries in Nova Scotia. Listen, you know, at the end of the day, and you know, the dispensary model I understand being closed down. Yep. I do get that. Yep. Um, if we're gonna We've leg- argued about that. If, right. If we're <laughs> going to legitimately practice, yes. med- uh, pra- oh, ha- practice capitalism or ca- have, you know, a free market. Yeah. They still have to abide by specific rules like let's pay tax and la la la. Let's regulate. Yeah. The problem is how they are regulating it currently just doesn't work. No. I do believe we shouldn't have dispensaries, you know, the same way I, I, I hate that I go to a convenience store and they only take my cash, but yet they still charge me uh, HST. I hate it drives me mad because mm. that's just as bad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I do think that we... We, we need to regulate and do it appropriately. And I think over time that may come. I'm just, I'm just, I just don't understand. You know, here, I'll give you an example. Two, three years ago, there was a, um, a it was probably two years, no, two and a half years ago. There was a dispensary just down the street from you guys, across from King William on King. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. Um, I don't recall. Do you know what I'm talking about? There was, give me the name of like an original, it was like, no, no, no. Um, I can't, anyway, I can't remember, I can't remember the name. But what we, what happened, I'd get patients coming into my clinic saying, Doc, I went to the dispensary and uh, they're handing out your card. They're not your card, like your business card. They're handing out medical cards with your picture on it. Uh, saying geez. that you are their doctor. And so, you know, it's, yeah. So at that time, I actually called the police. That was two years ago. And what did the police do? The police do? said, ah, uh, nothing we can do about it. Ha. Huh. You know? And so are we, are, we uh, are, the, are the police misguided a little bit? Clearly, they're misguided in closing down a lounge. I do believe they should close down, you know, uh, dispensaries, ones that aren't regulated appropriately. But uh, I think, you know, it's weird because why at that time did they do nothing about that and then wait arbitrarily now everything's getting closed down. It's not so arbitrary though, right? Because legalization's here and they should have been closed a long time ago. But you had guys that that just didn't care. This, I believe, is a direct direct cause of or reflection of what Doug Ford pointed his finger and said, take care of Hamilton now. Okay. Do you? Th- yeah. Uh, how many are How many are on Weed Maps? On Weed Maps. Uh, can you repeat Wait, that? Hold, hold on, on, Paula. You <laughs> Paula, Paula, Paula. Dougie Ford, what are you doing about your dispensary problem in Toronto? Yeah. He's concentrating on Hamilton. That's what he's doing. Well, 
you know, at one time Hamilton did have a lot. We were up to almost 50. Yeah, okay, 80. There were At one time there were more dispensaries in Hamilton than Tim Hortons. I believe that. I believe that. And, you know, but, you know, I remember back even, and that was actually in the last two years. Initially, you had the Hamilton um, Compassion Club back in uh, two, 2000 and like nine till 2011, maybe it closed down. And then there was nothing. There was literally nothing here until 2014. 14 or 15, Hamilton yeah. started reopening. 15, 2015? I'd like to know what happened to Hempleton or, or whatever, whatever they're what? calling it. Sorry, what? Hamsterdam. Yeah, that, uh, that's, you know, the, it was for a while. What's happening? Where you're in Milton, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were in Milton. How, what's happening in Georgetown? Yeah, do they do this? Okay, is there anything over there? How close? Aren't wait? Are you closer to Mississauga or to Brampton? Really? Huh, can so you, you talk to your uh, come closer to your mic, bud? We can't hear you, Tyler. Uh, I you know can't I can't hear, me? hear you, Al. I can't hear a word. <laughs> I'm <you're> sorry. <laughs> we'll plan this differently next time. We say that every time. Can you cough backwards? Yes, you're still sir. coughing. <laughs> always coughing. We're always coughing around Cough. here. It's all your fault. Can you hear anything he's saying? I can hear you, but I can't hear him. All right, I'm going to yell at you. How are you, Tyler? I'm doing great, Al. How are and, you? And tell me something. from an Because ed- you take care of the educational stuff. Yeah, at 100%. Synergy. Uh, from an educational standpoint, um, are you seeing more seniors coming in? 100%. Yeah. 100. I'm what seeing are you seeing? Particularly above 50 females. What? Above 50 females, up all the way to 95 years old. The demographics the right now, from what I understand, is 55 mm-hmm. and up. Yeah. And I start yeah. there. I'm 55. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, you're not. I am. <laughs> yes, I am. You don't look a yeah. day over 54. Well, thank you, Ira. Appreciate it. Are you going to say that when you look at my colon? <laughs> no. I don't want to see that colon. <laughs> Ever. Thanks. <laughs> so, yeah. Tyler, what is yeah. that? I mean, we're, st- we're here. I will come back to this. But he brought up a good point. I, I look out here, and the people I'm seeing are still young. Yep. There, there's a difference between what the medical world is seeing and what the uh, recreational lifestyle world is seeing. Mm-hmm. I, just looking outside here, that's exactly what I'm, you know. Yeah, it's an under 40 crowd, for sure. Yeah, it here is. Here it is. Yeah, yeah here right it is here under it is. 40, yeah. 100%. Is this a smoking section? You you can vape up vape. here. You can't smoke. You can't smoke. The other you the other you the can other shatter eyes. The other room is smoking. Yeah, I mean you shouldn't smoke anyway. So Pete, you know it's funny. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Get that. Come on, Alex. It's Vapril. It's supposed to be vaping. You all know, the time. listen. You you heard about the month? It's called Vapril now, right? You see what That's, I have in my hand, we're, buddy. We're, we're starting. I mean, this year was a slow movement of maybe three or four people that know about it, and some people that. Watch my Instagram, but for the most part, is April is going to become April, and what we April. see. Yes, do you know April. why? I've not heard that one yet. No, because I just came up with it. Well, Al. it just got really well, loud. I do see in a here. lot of people over here vaping. They're all hitting dabs. Yeah, so they are. Fantastic. They're they're they have dabbing. A nice dab lounge over there. I well, and he, do you know what I see a lot in here? Yeah, is what you, edibles. A lot of edibles and a lot of actual topical creams. They're, Almost every station has a little cream or rub as well. So it's, it's not just flour, which yeah. is nice. Flowers, t- I mean, people still like smelling flour. So yeah. now, you see the, you the see average it. flour. Talk to me about your vaporizer that you have, would you? Which one? Which one? The, the herb one. This one? one? Yeah. This is called uh, Utilian. It's, uh, oh, it's not bad. I shit, just used I it for it. the first time ever, <laughs> actually. I ripped I two... Uh, full bowls out of it the only thing i don't like about it it doesn't have a screen to tell you the temperature uh, you have to read okay. the book to see what temperature so you really never know truly what temperature it is but good quality vapor and, and off it what do you I, use to vape me i use the sutra a sutra um for my for medicine of course and uh 
for uh, instead of drinking a glass of wine. I'll, At 380 Fahrenheit. Yeah, so that's like 194. 92. 192 Cel- degrees Celsius. 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 And what's that? We can talk about this. Yeah, we can okay. talk about so, this. So uh, since, since we were talking about it on the show last what week, are we I think. What talking about? Oh, you're since, talking about me? Since, oh, here since he goes. legalization. I think this is fucking awesome, yeah. Ira. Because, you know, you are taking a chance at saying, I'm a doctor and I use cannabis openly. Yes. And, and, and uh, people don't get that. I mean, it's like Jack. Jack Lloyd, he's a lawyer and he uses cannabis openly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, do, I go, do you ever see a doctor at a bar? Of drinking, course. drinking beer like this, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and then I got to go do some surgery. Right, I don't use it. I don't abuse it. I don't use it daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I use it if I need it as medicine and Mindfully. as medicine. But I'll leave it even beyond medicine. If I'm using it for medicine, that'll be for my you know aches and pains. I have a lot of pain. I've broken my whole body. We know that. But recreationally or as lifestyle. I'm going to go as far as saying instead of having a glass of wine, because I'm not a big drinker. Yep, I don't. Yep, yep. I mean, I don't mind alcohol, but at the same time, I don't like how it makes me feel. I'd rather vape. Yep. Because, nice. one, it's safer. I don't have to worry about a hangover the next day. That, yep, I don't yep, have to worry about yep. all the crap that comes along with it. Yep. Uh, and I know that cannabis is okay. So what I, don't, what I do is I know my limit. Yep. And I, literally, I know my limit. Stay within it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I know, right? So I'm okay with that. And, uh, and as a physician, I promote wellness. Yes. And there's a lot more, but it's weird because there's a benefit to my medical and to my lifestyle use of cannabis. Well, you, you know, and, and that's, that's a good, I like the way you put that because you're, you're a cannabis user. You're also a medical professional. You know both sides. You slap them together. You've got more information than most doctors do. Yeah, I mean that's because I've been working in the industry yeah. for so long yeah. that I absolute that absolutely we do. And uh, uh, I mean Tyler has more education than than most. Have most. you taken courses, Tyler? He's taken you, my I mean, course. No, he but teaches I mean, my course. With I, me I understand now. that. But have you gone to any of the university courses? I've or gone anything? to university, but I went to university for marketing. Okay. Uh, so when I was in school, there weren't any cannabis uh, courses, and I also went yeah. to university in the U.S. So yeah. Okay. It wasn't really supported. Well, I'm gonna there. I'm gonna take that that what is the, it the the smart serve thing? Yeah, but yeah. so I wouldn't like I'll tell you the course that I developed care. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Is better than what okay. you're gonna get in from any Sign me any up. university. Mm-hmm. What we have put together, what I've been teaching doctors. That's how yeah. I train well, doctors. That's what I tell people I, when they say, "Who's Ira?" <laughs> I give the same program. Here's the crazy thing. Maybe I change some of the jargon, and we actually give more education to the mm-hmm. general public because we include growing in our educational program. So, which doctors don't get, but you get the exact, pretty much the same science. You're going to get the same dosing. You get the same extractions video. We do teach extractions yeah. as well. Um, and uh, you get the same history. And that's because medicine is changing. Yeah. I'm not, I may be your doctor, but you treat yourself. Well, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm here to work collaboratively with you guys. Yeah. And Tyler is there to help answer the questions. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, that same knowledge should be shared. 100%. So, uh, like some stuff that I get asked every single day would be, Oh, now I can grow four plants. How do I get started? That's like one of the things I get asked probably 15 to 20 times a day easily. Easily. And majority of the people are, again, over 50 asking me that. And they've never grown cannabis in their life. But they want to now. Yeah. My mom this morning surprised me. My mom's gone from... I have an old Jewish mom, just like Ira. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom sent me a happy 420 this morning. That's okay. fantastic. And I love that. But here's the cool thing. She's gone from that stuff. I don't like it when you're on that stuff. Yeah. To, Alan, my friends know what you do because I talk about you. And they have questions. So in, mm-hmm. as soon as we can get back into Gunjanistas, I'm going to gear classes to seniors. Anybody can come. Oh, yeah. But... See, what's going on is... You're almost a senior out. Yeah, thanks, Ira. Uh, what's going on is these large LPs, they're going out to Baycrest, they're going out to the Ontario Seniors Association meetings, yep. and they're recruiting. Oh, yeah. And then... Well, did you just see that canopy sign carp? Exactly. Yeah. 
and, and, and but what happens is then they get their marijuana, cannabis, and they don't know what to do with it because it stops there. Yep. Yep. E- exactly. Exactly. Yeah, the education. So, I mean, I find that to be the largest problem right now. There are a lot, you know, it's interesting because every LP has their own educational platform now, right? So they make it sound like uh, everybody's doing it. We don't need the education, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then I get the phone calls and then you get the phone calls and we see the people who work at these places and the education that they're getting is so basic level. There's no way that that is good enough. And- I would say, honestly, talking over the phone just with uh, the average call center worker, their education is more based on how to sell you this product yes. than rather than yeah. actually help you yeah. with what product you do need. It's, they're scripted. They're scripted. Yeah. They, well, they are. Even the CSRs that work in some of the – well, all of the LPs. Now, I understand they have to be because they have to know to, how to do that. Yeah. And but, they're not going to dispense medical advice. But when you walk, when I look at what's out there, yeah. and, you know, we are, even though they go in the, you know, people walk into the uh, cannabis stores or they come here, we get, they get really caught up in the bro science. Yeah, yeah, you were talking you know, about the bro, bro science, science last week. You called yeah. it peer pressure when you were younger. Yeah, peer trip, peer but, pressure, uh, yeah. you know, they get caught up in this bro science. People spew bullshit to each other. And that's the stuff that we got to go around and dis- dismantle. Now, you could go to university and take those, take like three semesters of courses, or you can do f- five modules that we teach through CARE in a weekend course over two days. And would you get, would, would, would I absorb the same information that a nurse or a doctor yes. would go and do the course that the government is offering? Yeah, no, the course the government's offering is nothing compared to what we're offering. Nothing at all. Eh? No. And, it's and like taking smart serve. Do, with, you, do you think that's why not a lot of doctors and nurses, nurse practitioners are not taking it? Yeah, well, the, why, why would they? No, for one, it's not, you, you know, like smart serve, it's not, uh, it's not there to treat anything. It's just to yeah. teach you a little bit about cannabis, but it's very, very basic. Okay. Uh, a physician needs something more practical than that. They need to understand the uh, clinical aspects of, uh, of practicing, uh, especially when using cannabinoids. Um, so they have to get something a little different. But that being said, that's what we teach to the general public. Yep. So that you guys, and sure, it may take time to absorb some of that. When we talk about receptors in your body that accept the cannabis, yeah. you know, instead of me saying CB1, CB2, transient receptor protein, all these things that make no fucking sense. <laughs> right. I'm sleeping. <laughs> I just say, you know, you've got, you've got a bus stop and the bus gets off. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and what happens when you let things off the bus? You so, know? Okay. So that's me, what you, but you learn pretty much the exact same stuff. Let me ask you a specific question. Yeah. When is cannabinoids introduced into your body the first time? I don't. I don't understand what you mean. Is it breast milk, where where we oh, get our first? You're saying taste if of, mom uh, uses can- no, 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 oh, no. Your endocannabinoid. Your endocannab- you're born with an endocannabinoid so system. That starts when you're, you're born. born, and when milk is introduced the first time. Well, it, you have endocannabinoids before that. Okay, so it's it's not the the mummy's milk no, starts it, at all. Mummy's milk contains cannabinoids, yes, yes. of course, it contains anandamide. But it starts before that. Yeah, you're born okay. with the system. Okay. Okay, and so you were going to ask something. So it's not a hormone, no, but it reacts like that, right? It reacts like a whole lot of things. Yeah. What is it exactly that it does? It, it does it does it does it? You know, when growing up, I want Tyler I, to answer that. I was I always told that cannabis masks, not fixes. We know now it fixes too, but smoke a joint your pain goes away why does your pain go away because it's blocking that it's changing your mind what so, so i in, in in a sense you're correct it does two it sort of does two things his, uh, his idea like uh i'll it's say like having wikipedia i'll i'll, I'll <laughs> say in that you know there's two reasons two ways that cannabis works and he's right but he is, the first one is makes you forget about your pain well that yeah that's so yes. It's not right where you talk about it's not that it treats anything, it was masking. I'm forgetting right now. (laughs) The the uh, the masking itself is part of the treatment process, right? To blunt your pain receptors or block your pain receptors in that way and then also 
put you into a euphoric state if you choose to be. That's therapeutic. Yes. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I still, you know, a lot of patients used to tell me when they come in, they'd say, uh, I have, uh, it's not that I don't have pain anymore. It's still there. I just don't care so much about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now that goes both ways. So yeah, that's one reason. But at the same time, it's physically changing the structure of your body so you don't have pain. That, you know, when it binds or when it interacts with those receptors in your body that accept it, it will decrease the inflammation. It'll improve, uh, it'll improve, you know, your sleep. It will different, help with your nausea. It'll do all these specific things. specific and patient-specific. It's very patient-specific and maybe strain. We're going to change the word strain right now. Here's a science word, chemovar. Chemovar. Chemovar, yeah. So they're more wow. like chemovars, you know, whatever. Same idea as a strain. So different chemovars, they interact differently with us. They contain yeah. different terpenes. They contain different flavonoids. I mean, you just look at this stuff that Tyler has here. He'll mm-hmm. probably tell you. How does that interact? Okay, so, bam. Tangerine Tem- gas right here. What terpene creates uh, citrus? You know, limonene. Yes. Creates all the citrus flavors big time. Then we have wow. Willow's pink. Tyler, pronounce the word. Yeah. <laughs> limonene, yes. Limonene. And now we have Willow's Pink right here, which has a ton of mercenine in it. So it has a piney, heavy, skunky taste to it right here. Yeah, oh, so okay. mercine, mercine's known to help uh, help with sleep. Yes. It's also probably the most abundant terpene in cannabis. Especially in indica strains. That's yep. why it comes from mostly mountainous areas. Do you know why that's why that happens? No. All right, here's a little, here's a little, uh, little history lesson. Uh, botany lesson. So, you know what happens to THC when it's exposed to the sun? Yeah? Yep. What happens? THC increases when it's exposed to the sun. It builds. No. No? Degrades. Degrades. Other way around, yeah. You lose THC around the sun. If it's fully developed. Yeah, right. Only when when it's fully developed. But if it's on the plant and it's growing, it's increasing. Well, it needs the light to increase. Yes. But exposure on an ongoing basis. Sorry, you're right. From a technical, like getting really technical, you're right. Yeah, uh, I, I just I took the question a different way. Yeah, no, totally you did. I understand what you're saying. So once it's fully developed, the longer it's exposed to heat and the sun, yes, what happens? Decreases. It decreases, right. So does mercy. Where is a sativa born? Jungle. Right. It, closer to the equator where there's lots yes. and lots of sun. Mm-hmm. And it's hot. Yep, so, and it's covered by a forest canopy. Right, so then the potential is that there's a decrease, a lesser amount of THC mm-hmm. with a... Uh, and this is just... We're talking about just land race yep, right yep. now. Uh, and then there'll be a lesser amount of, uh, of mercine because it degrades as well with the heat. But okay. here's the problem with that. I mean, now most of our strains aren't land race, right? Very so, few. Very few are land race. There are a couple guys like... Uh, John Chasen, who mm-hmm. I, uh, I I sat with again this week, and really, I've, yeah, he, that guy, man, he's got a lot of stuff going on. That's who gave me that 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 strain, okay, the okay. WC four, and uh, and uh, so yeah, so the we gotta you know so the THC will decrease the longer it is around uh, sun, so the. Um, the land race strains from a sativa region, the sativa region is closer to the equator, should have a, a lesser amount of mercine and THC. But at the same, than those that are found in an indica, which grows with less sun, wind blown, top of mountains, all whatever shitty. Yeah. So, yeah, what's that? I said, yeah. I'm agreeing so, with you. the problem that we run into now is that everything's a hybrid, everything's genetically mutated. Who the hell knows what you're getting? And I can make a THC. Most stuff isn't land race anymore, so you could get THCs and CBDs and uh, and and terpenes and flavonoids that all are the same. Whether you're a technically were a sativa at one point or were an indica at one point, mm-hmm. the name doesn't matter anymore. So let me ask you a question on that line. Uh, reading articles that they're now going to print. Uh, uh, cannabinoid, cannabinoids. Do you know anything about it? Have you read anything about it, Ira? What's that? Awesome. They're going to print cannabinoids. Ooh. Can I see that? They're going to... 
They're you, gonna you use a 3D oh, printer or whatever. To sorry, print, hold print on. We're getting uh, gifted here. Just a sec. <laughs> what is it? Oh, right on. Sophie's dress. Never. Looks really Samples. Nice. Yeah. It is. Okay. Sorry. Say that again. If you haven't heard about it, or you would have, you would have understood what I said. They, there's a, a, a company holds a patent on three three D printing cannabinoids. Yeah, I don't know how. Like real ca- cannabinoids? No, fake ones. Oh yeah, of course I know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like those big ones when they three D print like a big display. No, printing cannabinoids. Actually, printing. I don't understand. I don't either. Like I, synthetic I thought ones. They, yeah. Oh, so synthetic. real synthetic. Yeah, real. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, yeah. I thought you meant the plastic well, they, big they, ones. They, they, want, they, want to be able, <laughs> they want to be able to make it if they can't grow it. You know what I mean? So they want to make it, make it so that they don't have to grow it so that they can make more of it quicker. So they're going to 3D print. No, what they're going to do is probably DNA sequence these okay. things. Maybe. Okay. I don't know how you print a lot. I mean, you can, can you print live tissue is the question. You can. Well, they're, they're doing it with ears you can grow and noses. Live and you can, other organisms. Right, you have to grow. You have yeah. to grow. It's with still it. gonna yeah. grow. Yeah. I don't know if you can three D print live so, tissue. Actually, you know what? I've seen what he's talking about. With, they three D printed a lung. Yeah. I saw you that. Can do yes. that. Yes. yes, and they've done it. A, a heart. Right. Is heart valves. Okay, but hold on a second. Yes, those are structures, though. But that structure, you can three D print. I guess you can three D print tissue. So let me yeah. rephrase that. You can do that. But it's not like that lung is alive, breathing, or moving. Yeah. It has to be okay. attached. So I don't know how you're going to synthetically, how yeah. you're going to th- 3D print trichomes. Yeah. Like, it's not alive. And, like, how do you, that doesn't make well, sense. Well, you couldn't what, 3D I, print plant matter. I think what I they're trying to do. That's what I mean. No. How are you going to no. 3D print plant matter? No. I think I, what they're trying to do high, is Al. stop people from freely creating things. Like, like uh, Tesla just released all of their patents I love to it. public. I, I think Elon you know? Musk is amazing. Elon Musk had one goal. Sorry. No, it, no. I mean, ahead. I could be wrong, but I've read and listened to a lot of his stuff. He's a pretty amazing the, guy. Yes. He's, he's like the world's entrepreneur. Pretty but much. But he had one goal in mind. Survival of the human race. And the only way that humans will survive is to colonize another planet. So he, I guess is what he thinks. So he doesn't care about he he doesn't care about his money. He's given most of his money away. Yeah, and uh, I mean clearly he still has like a well, he's Tesla. a great philanthropist. Huge. He gives yeah. most of it away, and he doesn't care. He wants people to have his IP. That's amazing. That's amazing. Anyway, that was a side note. <laughs> I'm just I'm I you know I love coming to these things and to be here with you guys. It's, it makes it even more and having Paula here and all that. Oh, yeah. We've been walking around all day. It's been a long day. I can imagine. You know, we went. How down is to, she feeling? You know. So we're gonna get back off topic it, here. But let's no, get back okay. to Gunjanistas, okay. though. It, it, well, tell me like how Paula's doing. What happened when the police came in? I wasn't there, Ira, and I wish I was. Okay. Wow. Um, and and and. Uh, Apparently, the police came in, and uh, they just did what they do, you know? And it's sad. It's very sad. So who got arrested? uh, One of of the girls who works there, because she was there. And she was in the process of rolling pre-rolls for our HOPE program. So they walked in, and she was in the process. This is donated cannabis. All of the... All of the cannabis, all of the products that we get for Hope are donated by patients who want to be a part of this program. You know? Uh, you know, we have to run that program under a research protocol. Let's that would, do it. That would open up the... Uh, that would open up your lounge, too. That You know, it's interesting. I would love... I would put that under a protocol. It's just not so simple. But, you know, that's what the Vapor Lounge in Toronto is now, right? The... It's when you walk through the door, it says research in progress. It's under a research protocol. You know, the, um, uh, oh. what, I, can't I, remember, I can't remember her name, but she's out in Ken, uh, Kingston. And she turned their, uh, whatever they were doing, into a resor- resource center, which allowed people to come in and they could teach them how to use a vaporizer and how to roll and, and things like that. But they did it under... Let's not teach people how to roll. Let's no, but you understand what I mean. They, they, they offered a place to have these resources yeah. for people to come in and, and learn. Right? Uh-huh. 
and, and, and that's all we're trying to do. I know how you feel about combustion. Yeah, I don't like okay. it at all. And, and, you know, I'll be honest, my, my combustion intake is half I, now I since think, my shatterizer. I think since we've, and since we, I've, we've been pushing that. Yeah. You've been like, you're like, I will just... You I'm a joint guy. That. I love my joints, but Why? I'm okay. Why do you love your joint, though? Because you have because an addiction. I'm a smoker. I'm s- I 20-some-odd okay. uh, years call it smoking. What it is. Okay. I don't smoke tobacco anymore. But yes, I'm addicted to that smoking action. The ritual, for sure. The, ritual. Okay. the ritual. So then let's you know? talk about that, Al. Not just you. This is for everybody. I'm not going to pick on you. No, of course not. I mean, not. we all have it. You wouldn't we do all that. Have hey, I still hit my issues. bong occasionally. I'm guilty. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I think you just month, got though. one. Your girlfriend <laughs> got one for your birthday, didn't she? Yeah. He did <laughs> I get remember. one for his birthday. But <laughs> How did that work out? What? Sorry. Your, the, your, your birthday present. Magic butter machine? Yeah. No, no I, got, I thought you I got, got a bong. I got the magic butter. Yeah, oh, you got me you got the magic butter. See, here's the thing here. Now you made me sad. Both of my magic butter machines are... Locked away in mm. evidence somewhere. <laughs> oh, did they take years were there? I don't know. They're probably there. So, but yes, they look, were there. So uh, this month, like I said, is April. But let me t- let's talk about going back to April a second. I look out here and, you know, people talk about health and wellness. And then uh, they tell me that they don't have addiction or, um, or abuse or a habit. For, let's take away addiction. Because as soon as I say addiction, it becomes a, it's a, it's a people, it's a scary thing for people. Can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you fine. All right. It's a scary thing for people as soon as, uh, as soon as we say addiction. So let's call habit. And, uh, Mm -hmm. and when I had the guys on last week or a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, one of our guests on the podcast was literally holding his, uh, his, uh, blunt and talking about how good. Uh, or how healthy cannabis is from. So I said, I hate blunts. Okay, but hold on. There's no difference between a blunt and a joint. It's tobacco, both, bro. The yeah. Okay. One's tobacco. tobacco. One's paper. Like they're both bad. Yeah. One's okay. worse. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you know, Let's argue with the doc. I once, yeah. I once, I once heard. I can't say it because my communications teacher said it, and I think it was back in the '90s. I think now it's uh, it's offside to talk like that. But anyway. Um, I'll skip it. Shit, it would be such a good line to say right now. Say it, just say it. No, I can't say it. I can't. I can't say, say it. it. Off the anyway, what I'm going to say is the medium is the message. Let's go to that. Okay. Does it matter if you go to a five dollar? You have a five dollar TV or a fifty dollar TV? A TV is a TV. Fair enough. Right. Yes, I agree. Okay. A that monkey, was the a monkey is way, a monkey. A monkey, right? Whether <laughs> whether it's a whether it's a chimpanzee or um, I don't know any other name. What's this tattoo here? What the? Oh well, we, uh, yeah, I have the that's uh, the molecular structure of THC. Really? CBD. That's fucking it's cool. It's atomic weight and it's heating temperatures. And what's the temperature? The optimum temperature f- to to vape C- uh, THC. Uh, THC vaporizes at 156 degrees uh, Celsius. So when you're decarboxylating, I want to keep it a lot lower have, than that. Yeah, I have heard that 227 is the optimal temperature. Yeah. I that? use 230. That's super close. Okay. Yeah. Can I can yeah. I just go back to something here, please? What's up? Okay, sure. We're talking about. Uh, you see, you're trying to avoid habit formation right now, Al, <laughs> and addiction. <clears throat> the addiction to cannabis. And this is why I'm here. People ask me even why, you know, why do you come out to this stuff? Why, you know, why are you coming to Canna Crawl? You're a doctor. Well, first I belong. I'm also a member of the community and I support the community. But at the same time, I also support wellness. And if I can be here to talk to people about wellness, then I think I'm doing the right thing. So here's what I have to say back to your habit. Al's looking at me like he doesn't even want to hear it. No, I want to smoke a joint. Yeah, (laughs) falling asleep. My point is, the addiction isn't the cannabis. The habit isn't the cannabis. No, it's 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 the, the culture. This is the habit. It's like it's having a bath. It's the culture. It's, it's I want to like hear the argument. It's like having a bath. It's like having a bath. Right. Makes you feel better. It's right. a stress relief. It's something to take your mind off of what's it's going the, on. I'm with yeah, my you best surround friend. yourself with like 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 minded people. <laughs> right. Definitely makes you feel good. That's right. You're using your favorite bong with your favorite people in your favorite location, your 
favorite joint, your favorite way to roll this thing. My favorite whole, shatterizer. No, shatterizer I'm not talking about because oh, that's already oh, okay. wellness. I just had to get a plug-in. That's already the harm reduction part. I'm talking about the, the community of the culture, not the community, the culture of cannabis, the culture which feeds it. Oh, oh. sorry. Yeah, as... As he's coughing his lungs out. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, he's vaping, though. He's just... No, he's sick. Mm. Between Al and I... I think between Al and I, we've spent the last year sick. At least. Coughing. I'm going to a respirologist, by the way. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if you can hear that. They'll hear it faintly. Faintly. Are you better? I'm better. All right. Do you need some water? You got a bottle of water in front of you. Take a bottle of water. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, my pleasure. So, can we talk for a minute about your your clinic that you guys do? Yeah. You guys hold a clinic how many days a week? We we're open every day. Yeah. Whether we have a clinic every day, who knows? But we we uh. Um. We uh we're open every day. What else do you want to know, Al, about my clinic? Well, what kind of things go on? About our clinics. Well, ask Tyler. What's up? Did I can't you hear him. What kind well, of things listen, go on? Well, you're, listen, you're like space muffled. cadet. Come no, on over here. Man, sit here and try That's, and hear him. Right, you should here. come on over here. All right, there we go. Let's Why don't do we that. do that? There you go. So, I, kind of, I apologize. I kind of took Tyler's chair. I should have gone over here. So the, the <coughs> can you turn that? You're coughing your lungs out. I'm fine. No, no, just he's fine. Listen, everybody. Just turn, turn your mic who's around. Listening, you we are uh, just moving mics around. We stuff. are flipping chairs around so we can hear better. There we go. And I'll stop coughing because it's bothering the doctor. <laughs> All right, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So We're the good. question Perfect. was, yep. Um, why is uh, what happens at Synergy? What happens at Synergy? Well, when days when we have clinic. We usually have patients come in, depending if it's a new patient or follow-up day. A new patient day would be when it's their first day coming to the clinic. They fill out their questionnaires. Um, they'll come in. They'll get a full consultation with a medical assistant, and yeah. then they'll see the physician. And the physician will come in and consult with the medical assistant about what strain they feel the patient will benefit from, if it will be oil or if it will be a flower. I'm just going to clarify one thing. What's up? Um yeah, so they're always the physician is the the physician you're basically seeing a physician. The medical assistant there is a representative of the mm. physician. Yep. And the physician is always creating the treatment plan mm-hmm. with the patient. Yeah. All right, sorry. I said they see the medical assistant, then you. Just giving you technicalities. Okay. It's okay. Te- the reason it's so technical is because a medical assistant really is just a transcriber. Right. Okay. And uh Data collector. Okay. That's okay. basically what they are. All right. Okay. So what else happens? Sorry to interrupt. After that happens, then they come out and they'll see me, and I'll speak to them and make sure that they understand all the information that they were just told. So if they need a vaporizer, I'll recommend what ones would suit them, depending on their budget and things like that. Um, if they're taking oil, make sure they see a bottle of oil before, obviously, empty. But show them how they would measure out their dosage. If they're going to be measuring out like 0.25 to start or 0.5 to start. Just making sure they have a good understanding of how to actually begin before they do. Because like you said earlier, a big miss can skew is people get a prescription and then they go home and they don't know what to do. A big miss what? Yeah, they don't know what to do A miss skew. Yeah. Yeah. A miss skew. Miss skew. I don't know. Making up words. (laughs) Yeah, man. I love it. Always do. A big miss skew. So... (coughs) Um, and, and I love it. So you look aside like a from the, aside so from the, the the whole cannabis thing, yeah, uh, it, regular services as well. You can come in when you got a cold or you need a shot or things no. Like we that. don't practice. So okay. we're pain. We're basically uh, mm. pain majority management. Majority of what we do is pain management. Okay. but we'll see other patients. About seventy five percent. Tyler, correct me if I'm wrong. About seventy five percent of what we do is uh, pain related, and then twenty five percent everything else. What do you think? That, that's a Fair assessment for sure, for yeah. sure. So, uh, foot specialist? Uh, no, foot. No. Foot, yeah, like a chiropodist. P 
pain, Al. Pain. That's, believe me, I got pain, Ira. <laughs> believe me. Yeah, we got. <laughs> yeah, no I've got. There are no chiropodists. I, 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 I there are up pain north, doctors. I was, I was seeing a chiropodist for a while, and you know, it's like glorified uh, foot massage <laughs> yeah, yeah. technician. But no, it, chiropodist it does some good Made my feet so much better. Yeah, you know, especially with the neuro pain. Right, right just on. that once a month. That's good. Do you have diabetes? I have type two. Yes. Really? Yes. Ow. Yes. Ira, you're gonna come start walking with me. All right. I, you see, my, my 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 thing, as you know, with ADHD, we'll vape and walk. my big thing is my social anxiety. I want to go and then come home, and if I'm alone, that's exactly what I do. When I'm out with people that I'm comfortable with, yeah. Uh, you, you look can like you've lost some out. weight, actually. I have lost, but but probably from doing five kilometers. A day at fucking Gunjanista. Yeah, good. <laughs> you well, know. no, you yeah. actually look. A, actually, a year ago today, mm-hmm. you look a lot. You look a lot healthier. Well, I, I've mentioned this to you before, but I was at over five hundred pounds at one point. Yeah, and I'm down around three, three twenty, somewhere around. I'm working on nice. on that for my mother right yeah. now. She, it's so tough. It took me twenty years to gain. Yeah, and then uh, and and uh, a rather large porn uh, porn site sitting in front of a computer for ten years running that, and uh, and then I, I was just like you know I couldn't breathe I quit smoking I haven't had a cigarette in six years Wow good congrats you know um, and 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 until maybe like I well it's been about a year since I've been using the Shatterizer and which I consider uh, the best damn microdoser you can get. Uh, and it's cut my consumption of combustion. Oh, of combustion. Uh, yeah. You know, doobies and stuff. Also, because I can't afford it. Yeah, uh, it's so down, expensive. Well, I mean, I can buy a a slip of shatter for whatever price. Yeah. And and that'll last me two three weeks because That's I'm right. just taking a little ball and putting right. it in there and going about my day. Mm-hmm. I'm not having to stop and roll a doobie or load up my whatever. Right. You know, it's always with me. Right. The mm-hmm. thing I don't like, it is always dies when I go to a concert. The minute I get to the fucking gate, it dies. <laughs> does it charge? Yes, it does. So do you only charge it once a day? Uh, if I'm out all day. Get an external charger. I need to get one of those little yeah. battery packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, need one of yeah. those for sure. Yeah, that's what like I, I have all that phone. stuff. Everything's plugged into my computer here, right? I got five-hour charge. That's a cool I can, computer, though. I can run around and, like, that's why I said, like... If, we could have been doing this from City Hall or whatever. I thought this was this afternoon. <laughs> really? Oh, is that why you said you were coming yeah. in at 1 o'clock? So when yeah. I called you, you had no idea what was going on. I had no on. idea what was going on. Okay. I didn't even know where I was going. Well, I knew where I was going, but I didn't know where I was going. You know? Uh, yeah, you know, that's funny. Because when I got your text, it said, yeah, we're going, and I'll be there at 1 o'clock. The I'm plan like, was to come here, do a show, and then go celebrate 420. And then what happened at City Hall? Uh, there was, you know, a, a nice. No, but what crowd. was it? it? They had just a regular f- crowd of uh, people uh, to do what? Uh, they were handing out rollies and celebrating 420 and going woohoo at 420. Everybody lights up, and then you know you talk. They had some prizes. What other holidays stuff. do people flood City Hall? Seven ten will be this yeah. year. No, I get that, but sure. but cannabis is the only. Only holiday well, it's I know. The very first legal one, which right. is fantastic. Which, yeah. yeah, it's pretty yeah. huge. It's no longer a march where you that can stand huge. in front of cops and smoke pot. I actually want to know what day. people think about that. This is like the first legal 420. I know mm. you. So, but there's a big damper, and the big dampers has got There's some weird things. Like in BC, right now, they're but, supposed to be hosting a lot of stuff at parks, and they're shutting it all down. You know what? Yeah. Like a, a lot, lot of stuff is A lot of people down. aren't excited about 420 like they used to be. Right. Because of legalization. Yeah. Right. And um, I'd say even more people, because of legalization, they're afraid to come out to events like this now. They're well, afraid yeah. to come and sit in, in Gunjanistas and hang out with like-minded people. Mm-hmm. So here's the, uh, here's, you know, it's funny. I, w- I like I will- that you're over here better, but. Yeah, yeah way I better. Can hear right? you now. Yeah, yeah. It's a here. lot better. Do you watch uh, Murder Mountain? Have you watched it? Oh, yeah. I have watched Fantastic it. Fantastic series. Yes. Fantastically yep. insane series. Yep. Yeah. But you know that one guy said legalization has done to cannabis, er, to the black market in two months, what prohibition over the last 40 years couldn't do. Yeah. It took two months, and the market is like, you know, pretty much disappearing. Right? 
Mm -hmm. uh, except I, <laughs> I was like, I'm, uh, yeah, no. But I, I mean, but but people saying like 420 is not even just the way you said it. 420 is not a big thing anymore. I mean, it is. It's now you know, a holiday. You, you know what's going to be a big thing this year is 710. When yeah, when they when they legalize the concentrates, you're going to see that market just fucking It'll explode. explode. I totally explode. agree. The solventless revolution will come finally. Yeah, I'm, finally. You know, I, one thing that I'm we most upset that. about is my squisher is still in the in the bowels of Gunjanista, or maybe in an evidence locker right now. Did you leave everything there? Everything was my yeah. Everything I was my my gun my machine. I had uh, magical butter had just sent me a machine to do demos and classes with, and I had my own as well. Yeah, they're they're both there still. Fuck. Oh man. Yeah. So I can't. I I mean I can still do classes. I've got a, a little thing at home. But yeah. You know it's it. It's just a pain in the butt. It it's more than that. It's yeah. it's detrimental to what we're trying to accomplish in helping people get a clue properly because they the commercials none advice none only thing they're allowed to say is we have weed these are the strains that we've called come on in and get them well yeah. you know it's weird because today on uh, our it wasn't a dream was it <laughs> huh. Hold on a second. I think no, I think no, no, was it, it, a dream? it wasn't a dream. No, no. Okay, I just remembered where it was. This, it was this, on what's his name's uh, Instagram. There, I uh, can't. You know, four the uh, four one six. Oh, the uh, cannabis guy. What's four one six vapes? Four one six. No, uh, I can't remember his name guy. right offhand. Um, I need his number. Dude. I have nowhere to get anything Hold in on. Toronto. You're, <laughs> you're not talking about six buzz, are you? No. Um. Hold on, I'm going to tell you this name because I'm going to look it up. Like I cut it up. Hold on, everybody. I will find you. Oh, I'm singing songs now. Jeez. Uh, I, I got to take my glasses off to see now. Just saying. Yeah, you know what? I don't know where it is. What did anyway, you say anyway? What did you say? My point is... Um, How you doing? I don't even remember what we were talking about. <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible. That's I all just, I know. Oh, God. Because <laughs> yeah, no you're not even paying attention to anything I'm saying. No, I am. I'm listening. Well, I can hear oh, you. Oh, no. That's what I was saying. Uh, so he was in Toronto today at Nova. The uh, second shop that opened yep. in Toronto. Okay. And uh, they were saying, you know, you walk inside there and everything is on display. It vaporizer, you name it. And that's because behind the 19 plus, you're then allowed to mm -hmm. uh, uh, per market to, you're allowed to market to the adult population. You just can't do it in public unless it's behind a veil of 19 over. Jack right. mentioned something last night that they have laxed that part of things a little bit they're changing that yep. so that there can be given a little bit of advice but it's very stringent mm -hmm. and I think that'll probably fall into that smart card thing for sure it will you know. I'm not talking but, about advice but, though I'm talking but, about promoting yeah, no, just yeah, but, you know, that's, advertising for, for patients though problem. Ira that you need a place to say hey I heard about this pink Kush strain, and this is what I heard it was good for. What can you tell me about that? You can't get that. Yeah, but nobody knows. Fair That's enough. That's the problem. But there is this an is opinion. This is going to make you feel like X. Well, it's well, going to make could me say feel like pink Y. Pink Kush is going to get you really couch locked and high because that's what it's going to do. It's a very THC rich strain. Yeah, and it's or very you say for strong. most people. Yeah. The common theme. Yeah. So I think when we use words like uh, this is what it's going to do to you, th mm. this is. The is part is the problem because people yep. are individual. For sure. No? Have you yep. seen the same strain? You would see this. How many patients? Mm. You've seen thousands and thousands of patients yes, now. Yes, I have. You've yeah. been with Synergy almost two years, yeah? Over a year now. Okay. See, I'm really good with uh, my Just whatever. feels like a long time. Is that what it is? <laughs> Damn, boy. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, what I, what, so you probably, you've seen this then. How would you say that all patients respond the same to every chemovar or no. whatever every strain? No, so what no, do you no. see? 
people respond drastically different uh, to certain strains. There are people that have hy- hypersensitivities to THC. They're going to respond differently to almost every strain. The most common thing, though, is I'd say usually once someone indulges in around 5% THC or in, so- in like an edible, you'd be above 5 milligrams to 10 milligrams is where they start feeling the psychoactive effect the, on a, like a, an average. What would be That's considered really a microdose? Start- what would I consider a microdose? Yeah. A microdose of like THC? Of, of cannabis. Three milligrams, four Real, milligrams? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I've personally made microdose caps like that for myself, and I found that they help a lot with sleep. Just just like about two hours before bed. Cookies do that for me. Yeah. I mean, but how I, many milligrams are in those cookies? I typically make an oatmeal or a chocolate chip cookie at about 120, 150. Yeah. Do you Which eat like is, half of it? Or do you no, know? I'll eat, I, I like the cookies, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, sure. You know, and, I, and I, I, I like edibles because, although, holy cow, uh, we had a, an event at the lounge, and they left some high, high, high dose, like 300, 400 milligram yep. cookies. And I had one, and I was like, fuck, these are good. I'm going to have another one. And then Are I, you 420radio.com? I, dot CA. My bad. Yeah. Uh, And then I had another one. And then I was like, "Eh, I can handle a third one. And then within an hour, I'm like, I need to eat. I need to go. I'm going for food. (laughs) See ya. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, Ira, I have actually uh, done that uh, hypernesis thing. And then the, the, the hyperemesis or whatever it's called. What's hyperemesis? Oh, too too hyper much emesis. Is that what it is? Hyperemesis. Em- okay, so the so, word. Hold on. The word okay. emesis is vomiting. Okay, that's why it's hyper means a lot of. So more. I had too much oil. Yeah. Felt like I was going to have a heart attack. Yeah. Went to the hospital. Had a nice conversation with the ambulance driver. What do you take? Cannabis. What else? Cannabis, cannabis, so cannabis. So you've cannabis. had an emergency. Oh yes, I have. Visit I have. Cannabis. The first time so I had too that's much. That's important to know. People know. The, what do you mean? The first time you ever used it? No, no the I first time much. I was using pure, like actual RSO, and I had too much. Oh, you, who? Well, sorry. I I want to just go back to that moment. Okay, tell your story. Tell your story. I had too much. Okay. I was smoking. I was having edibles, and I had I was on RSO, and I had a panic attack. Yep. I thought I was having a stroke, so I called an ambulance. My friend said, call an ambulance right now. So I did, and I went. You know, the arm was hurting, yeah, yeah. everything. And I got there, and they they gave me some orange juice. They asked me questions, blah, 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 blah. I waited two and a half hours, and they let me go home. They said it was just a panic attack. Yeah. Triggered by, I'm feeling, and I'm being honest, too much. Yeah, too much to I, see. I overdosed myself basically you went green that you, greened myself right so you got yeah. you you greened out so let's let's talk about that okay so that's a good uh, that's a good question people often have will uh will cannabis cause me to vomit cannabis does like has this bimodal distribution yes so in certain doses it's going to help you with uh the up. with your no with your nausea and it'll okay. take away your nausea in a yep. certain population there's a certain other population that it can potentially make it a little bit worse for. Usually the person who's chronically used cannabis for a long time and they're using street weed. It's not the cannabinoids, the THC that you're yeah. getting from, from a regulated dispensary. Mm-hmm. So, but then, then, you know, if you only had one episode of, uh, of emesis or vomiting, this is like ask the doctor. If you've only had yeah. one, one episode of emesis or vomiting from cannabis, I wouldn't call that cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. Okay. I would call that greening out. Well, and, and, because, and that was my point of bringing up the yeah. subject. That's like going out and drinking too much one night. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. And it goes away. The problem is you drink too much, you can die. Yeah, 24 alcohol, hours and then you're okay. From alcohol? No. no, no too much alcohol, cannabis. you can Too die. much cannabis. You I can wake up. breathing yeah. and you yeah. can start oh. yeah. choke on your vomit. Yeah. yeah. All, all badness. All, I've seen it And all. you become I worked an in a, I worked at an Emerge <laughs> for a while. Oh, you did? Yeah, as security. Ow, yeah. the security guard. I was. I really? Where? Tron- Toronto East General. No way. Yep. 
That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, so a lot that. of What's things. What's your best security guard story? I want to yeah, hear. hear I want to hear your best security guard story. Guy came in with blood all over him, spitting up blood, uh, and uh, they wouldn't register him until he was out of cuffs. Right. The minute he was, he was out of cuffs, he went all carry and spit blood on my partner. Uh, and, and, and my partner was a very large uh, martial artist who drop kicked him through the door, through Jeez. the glass door. Whoa. And the cops just picked him up and took him back into emerge. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Damn. I've had. Uh I've had patients jump over counters. Well, you're an emergency room doctor, yeah, right? I'm an emergency yeah, emergency doc. Yeah, I've had people jump over counters. Yep. Try to attack me. I had one guy try to take an IV pole out of. He took his IV pole out of the like you know the pole that and pole, came at you. The uh, the IV on it. He took the pole out and started swinging it at me. And we're in this closed room. We're moving the beds. It's like survival at some time. Yep. Yeah. You know the nuts. best. I had this one patient. You know people smoking. It's crazy. Yeah. I had a guy sitting in. Uh, in, I remember I was at St. Joe's or somewhere, and uh, excuse me, I had to see a, I was going in to see a patient who was having trouble breathing. So I walk in the room. This guy's lying in a bed with an oxygen mask in one hand and a cigarette in the uh, other yeah, hand. Oh I, I, yeah, I've seen that in the emergency yeah. department next to the oxygen. <laughs> like you see this stuff. You may not believe it, but you see this stuff. That's like, just that's just as bad as having a smoke while you're pumping gas. No, it's yeah, it's but except the gas is open. Yeah, yes. like you, yes. it's like smoking in your gas tank. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's how crazy it is. Anyway, there was there was there was some crazy nuts. crazy things that happened at the hospital. I mean, we, we you chase you chase a lot of people down hallways in the middle of the night, and there's lineups out out the door. I mean, that's that's a major hospital downtown. Oh yeah, that also works with Scarborough and North York, and yeah. it's the Overflow Hospital, I believe. Back then, I mean, we're talking the '90s, right? And before before expansion, yeah. And uh, but but we chased some people down the hallways and, and and stuff like that. And there were lineups on New Year's Eve. Wow, New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah, we used. To, I remember I worked for a while at St. Mike's. We used to just put a bunch of row of chairs yeah. up yeah. and just line them up. And all the drunks would just sit there. Yeah. And we used to be able to send them to the, like there was to be a drunk tank. Yeah. At the police station, they stopped doing that. <clears throat> There are no drunk tanks anymore, so we literally have rows of these guys. Some days, wow. you know when did I mean? they get rid of the drunk tank? They got rid of the drunk tank. When? Uh, probably two, three years ago now. Uh, four it, years yeah, ago. Yeah, I was just saying it existed at least five years ago. Ah, uh, did you yeah, <laughs> tell us that story? There's a few of those, but I don't need to tell any of those. All right, fine. <laughs> Maybe off air. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. It's it's it. You know, I'm I, I I'm a victim of the '60s growing up in Toronto. I mean, I literally grew up in Yorkville. Yeah. Okay. When when Yorkville was very much like the old village here now, yeah. that kind of flavor. And I think that that's probably what's dragged me to Hamilton. I mean, I'm a Toronto brat, born and raised. Mm-hmm. Just spent the last twenty some odd years living up north, and I'm having reverse culture shock. And and I'm actually enjoying being able to just sit here and watch people, and oh, yeah. just like. Our our uh, canicade, mm-hmm. it goes in waves, you know. Yeah. Half an hour. There's a lot of people. Then it dips. Nobody. And then another one. Where's that? At our canicade. That you know. It's like. Yeah. And, but it's it's, the whole uh, last one. I was, very pleasantly surprised with how many parents were out with their kids. Today? At the market. Oh, at the Probably market. here, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For That's sure. happening more and more. Mm-hmm. No, there's no kid here. Not children. No, not no, children, like Ira. Old, like your... Adult children. Oh, like yeah. moms and And their sons. You know, of age 20 kids. some odd year old kids. People that you know. are a little younger than me with their parents. Yeah. If it, my mom was supposed to come today, we had a whole bunch of stuff planned at the, at the lounge today. My mom was going to come, but she decided to go to shul today instead. Really? Yep. Where? Uh, she goes to a reformed synagogue in Toronto. I don't know which one. And my sister's with her tonight. Oh, and that's so they went crazy. For, they and, actually practice religion. Yeah. And, and uh, tomorrow my mom's making Passover dinner for the three of us. Oh, that's so nice. So, yeah. I went to my parents last night. 
Do you have latkes and uh, no? Roast that's beef? on the ro- latkes are no, on. No, we, like get, the latkes. Other hall. You get, we get, get latkes. You get latkes. You can't you even eat come over. You get latkes on Passover. Latkes, like, latkes and roast beef, like, man. <laughs> you're supposed to eat like flatbread and like uh, lots of matzah, matzah and maror, like yep. the horseradish. Sounds radish. good. I don't know yep. what any of it is, but it sounds good. So you, it, it, the flatbread thing, not so good. You don't okay. like you don't oh, imagine eating matzah, cardboard matzah with cheddar cheese. What is oh. matzah? Is it cheese? No. Yeah, unleavened bread. It's okay. bread. Yeah. So, yeah. Unleavened okay. bread. Yeah, yeah. So let me explain. Let me I give like the horseradish. I heard you say horseradish. Yeah, we, we eat a lot of horseradish. I love horseradish. Do you, so, maybe you do. <laughs> on our holiday. Well, on this, so, welcome this to holiday. the Jew show. Yeah. Here, yeah. Now, we're, now we got a, we're getting a Hebrew lesson. <laughs> nice. Uh, so um, back in the day, uh, according to tradition, we were slaves in Egypt. I know this. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. It's in the, the Old Testament. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Yep, yep. You know, as legend has it. Sorry, I'm just kidding. And Should we Google it so we get it right? No, I know. I'll get it right. Yo, I went to seminary, man. I was rabbi. Did you really? I had like a black hat, long back coat. Can you sing? Cool. I did. I did the whole thing, man. I, you know, I was like canters. The curls? I didn't need the curls. Canters. Okay. Oh my god. I got no. I got no ability to sing. The canter's voice. Canter is just captivating. I don't like opera, but uh, listening to a canter sing. The prayers that or I've go been to the hearing. Opera. I don't even yeah. know what a canter is. But it's, but it's dude different. Because at the front and sings Because I've been prayers. hearing those prayers right. all my life. Right, of So course. when you so hear you a, them. Oh, like that <laughs> the voice, it's just like, You should Whoa. be a canter, Al. No, Al, you no, you're no. big enough to do it. No, 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 uh, no. So anyway, no Passover, <laughs> as, you know, as legend has it in the Bible, we uh, were slaves. We in the. Can e- I take a guess? Yeah. Is it when Moses did the... Goat blood on the that doors. Yeah, yeah, you got I knew, it. Yeah. I knew. <laughs> the whole burning yeah, bush. No, man. So yeah. let's talk about that burning bush. Oh, yeah. here we okay. go. I'll listen about the burning bush. You know, listen. Yeah. Come on now. Was it a burning bush? Uh, you know, they say that some people say, some cultures say that some cannabis is that is the bush of the you know the the tree of life. Shit. Right. You're and talking so, smack. So come on now. It, you, I mean, it's it's definitely the, a tree. You did you? you how far did you go with the seminary? Life? Let's talk I believe about in a tree of life. <laughs> what do you mean? Sure. <laughs> what do you think is the tree that brings life to the earth? The most that has the most, like gives the most, gives the most to the earth. Are we, I'd say it's hemp. No, I no no no. Okay, well, so that's what I, I were, say. Okay, yeah. so on that the level, most, most diverse the plant on the planet. On everything. that level, on that level, I agree with you. But when we when he's talking about the tree of life. He's talking about like the spiritual God tree of life. So you're saying it was a cannabis plant? No, what burning. I'm saying is that didn't happen. Maybe in your life. Hey, we'll never know. Or in your no, head, really I should knows. say in your Maybe head. Maybe there is a you, garden that's of right. Eden. We will never know. It's at the bottom of the ocean now. Yeah, it's, man, it's, it's in Atlantis. It's exactly. Exactly. Down in the say, Bahamas yeah. or wherever <laughs> they found that thing. Remember all those little statues they yeah. found? Yeah, man. It's mm. sitting there or with Hercules. So what's coming up th- this month? Hold the, on, the Passover. Oh, Passover. We're explaining to, uh, That's right. Passover. Uh, to Tyler with the... Okay, so let me tell you. Yes. So you're right. It was Moses and the, and the door with the blood and the goat, goat blood, and yeah. the death of the firstborn. Blah, all the yeah. plagues yeah. and all that shit. Yeah. 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 Moses and the, and and the light so, lasting eight yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, no, 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 that's wrong it, one. Yeah. That's Hanukkah. Yeah. Good job, though, buddy. <laughs> that's when we light the candelabra. You're, you're an awesome Jew. Okay, so <laughs> because... So as legend has it, we had to hurry out yep. of the Egypt, you know, when everybody was dark. It was mm-hmm. dark outside. We started leaving the blood, the whole thing. Moses comes yeah. in. Pharaoh says, oh, get the hell out of here finally before he, I changed my mind, mm-hmm. you know, as the, as the story goes. And so we had to run out of there really quickly. So we didn't have time to bake regular bread. Of course, we were thinking about baking yeah. bread. You know, that's the first something thing you think about. Hours. Hey, guys, let's, gotta, uh, let's make some matzah. Let's make some, right. So matzah takes 17 minutes. Oh, okay. So uh, what you do is, is you... Is it really doughy? Uh, it's, it is, no, it turns rock solid. So you, it, there's very, very little water. It's mostly uh, just uh, wheat, mm-hmm. but it's unleavened. So it's like it, it stays super, super flat. You use a drop of water... You put it in the oven mm-hmm. for seven in this really hot oven for seventeen minutes. And it doesn't rise. Doesn't rise it stays soup. It stays as flat oh, as and this it's card. Great with some <laughs> and butter and hard salt as this on card. it. It turns into rock basically, okay. and you're eating rock. So it's crap. Oh, it's, it's a horrible. cracker. It's, crap. it's it's worse it's than a, a cracker. Crack. It's a rock cracker. It's fucking awesome. It's like making. It's like eating. You know those tam tams? No, you don't know tam tams. So you have a big square of matzos. 
and then you have so some. So you eat a, that's all, hold on. For eight <laughs> days, that's all they're allowed to eat. You can't eat anything that's leavened. You can't eat anything that's uh, uh, fermented. Any yeah. part of fermentation, you have to stay away from. Okay. The, you know, and depending on which part of the world, you can either eat rice or not eat rice. Because somehow the people in Europe, you know, I'm European Jew, mm-hmm. uh, and so we're not allowed to eat eat like uh, rice. But if you're uh, if you're like um, Moroccan or somewhere from like the French, my side, family's from Poland. Sephardic, yeah. So mm-hmm. you're like me, Ashkenazic Jew, yeah. European Jew. We're not allowed to eat it, but somehow they're allowed to because they knew the difference. We're just dumbasses and couldn't figure yeah. out. No, that's not I'm, really. I'm wheat. a sucker for deli. Yeah, but you can eat a lot of meat. You yeah. can but eat you all the meat you want. Sean. Yes. So you put harsh. So part of the whole tradition is it's an an event. Yeah. It's like a whole. We say we we uh, we tell a story, but at the story mm-hmm. we have props, and one of the props is horseradish. We tell the story about how horseradish <laughs> commemorates the uh, the the bitterness, yes, bitter the bit- herbs, the, the bitterness, yeah. the bitter and of, the sweet of the Jewish people as they were slaves in this land of Egypt, and so we. Right, that's what it is. That's horseradish or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it's. So we eat a lot of it to remind us of that bitterness. Now it's not just that, of course. The bitterness of you know, my well, dad the, goes into the whole story. There's and, there's several things, and there's actually a what, platter. Right, I was just saying. And you have an props. egg okay. and a shank okay. and, a, and, a, and a bunch of props. And that. Yeah, is props. basically it. Props. And yeah. you have to drink four glasses of wine throughout right. the whole time. You start off with. We like alcohol. Yeah. That's Part why of, Ride is so popular up at Bathurst right. and Finch. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I drove home. I didn't drink the wine. Bathurst and Steels. So, uh, and throughout this whole sort of event, which is sort of like um, a live murder mystery. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's people playing out parts yeah. if you want, reading yeah. from a book, yeah. doing this whole yeah. thing. Yeah. And then the kids In, do prayers the kids, as well. Yeah, and, and then and they're singing. We is have, this out of the temple or the synagogue? You, you either, it starts yeah. in the temple and you take it home. Yeah. We yeah. even have our own Easter egg hunt. We hide a matzah yep. and you got to go search for Mo- it. Mov and David. That's pretty awesome. Mov and David? No, that's no. a wine. What, what are they? What are they uh, uh, Afi Komen. Afi, uh, thank you. I haven't been to <laughs> Jewish me, school a in a while. <laughs> I know all this stuff. I'm like the I'm like the worst heretic. I was under so the, the table. The guy that knows about it and does none of it. <laughs> anyway, were you raised reformed? No, I was raised very See, orthodox. I, I was my my uncle's a rabbi in in New York, and, but where we were raised. My dad uh, is a rabbi. Refo- reformed is he with the black hat? His, Hasidic. So hold on. Yeah. So you're, you're from orthodox, a Hasidic family. You build the hut. Wow. I build the hut outside. The, hut. Guys, the only type Purim. of Jewish building I know how to do is to okay. build a hut in the backyard. Okay. Ah. Do you know why we do that? Guys, this is like a whole Jewish lesson. No, yeah, so to be honest, I took world religion in school because I, I was at a, a Protestant university, so yep. I had to take religion courses by just being there. And I read the First Testament and the New Testament and all that stuff. So I understand it, but hearing it from you guys brings it more into perspective, how people actually celebrate it. My yeah, uncle sure. uh, is at the Hebrew Union College in New York. And you walk into his office in his home, mm-hmm. and he has Torahs and Bibles and other religious manuscripts from all over the world. Yeah, long. And he has. Uh, so you're a Hasidic. Yeah, yeah. Orthodox. Yeah, yeah. We have we have some Orthodox family in uh, Israel. The only time we see them, unfortunately, is when there's oh, a. Oh, now death. you can actually see what I'm talking about. So see that round, yeah, dish I see in that. the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all the little props are on top of it, and one of them is horseradish. We talk, literally talk about horseradish. You're making me hungry. Just waving around. I, I kind of <laughs> want. I wouldn't mind roast beef with some horseradish. We just I came can go for some pastrami. And we just came from na- right. nationals. Yeah, yeah. Was it nationals? On a nice sourdough. Oh. Yeah, nationals. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, you can't so have funny. sourdough. Actually, the very, We're not allowed. We can only no. have matzo. There was no. a there was a deli I'll get my I went box to in tomorrow. St. Louis. I was a Jewish <laughs> deli, and it's the best deli I've ever been to in my Panzers? life. Panzers. It was in St. Louis. Oh, okay. Jews but it was, with, man, uh, holy crap, the meats there were, we're phenomenal. We're good with, with our meat, with our and deli meat. you would get, man, the biggest sandwich. Yeah. And the Dijon mustard. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Oh, you're so making me good. hungry, but I've been, CJ, eating like, I've been vegetarian. You know it's CJ, good. right? Yeah, CJ, CJ Price. Yeah, yeah. He has a smoker. So oh. when I find that optimum brisket, he's going to smoke it for me, nice. and then we're going to eat it. Nice. Well, you'll be invited. I'm. I'm not eating meat right now. Oh, uh, are you fasting? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually think chickens are really cute. Yeah. So I eat. Fish. So you'll eat them? No, I eat fish. I don't. I think fish. So are you're ugly. veggie? Well, I'm like a puscatarian. I like. I eat fish because 
I just don't think they're as cute. So I'll tell I you won't invite happens. you to come to Wahlburgers with me? No. Well, I mean, I don't know how long it'll last for. <laughs> but the truth is, as long as it's, like, if I was doing it myself. Okay, so here's why I'm doing it. I mean, there's a couple reasons. It's a the good num- cleanse. The first, the first reason is I was buying a bag from a store, and they had little chicks in the window. And there was just, I just, like, these things are so fucking cute. I'm overeating chicken. <laughs> but then... And then I'm also like, you know, the way that we we're, the way that we're producing chickens and meat and using all these meats and stuff, maybe it is like it meets law criteria, but I don't think it's sustainable. No, I think industrial farming is horrible. I think and it's you know, not sustainable. Although, so I had this argument yesterday with uh, I'm on your side, and I had this argument with my cousin. My cousin is a um, she's a PhD chicken farmer. Like yeah. she actually did her research. So that's what she does. In chickens, she makes sure they're all compliant, and she tells me, "Oh no, they're all killed humanely, and they're all." Who does she work for? Uh, right, it's <laughs> a good question. Ah, you know what? That would have been awesome. I didn't ask. Hey, Kayla, yeah. if you're listening, who do you work for? Yeah, uh, DM me. So, uh, so she says, you know, well, it's all very humane now. Mm-hmm. They're all put to sleep first. And it was human error in the past that made it all worse. And now that we don't use that anymore, it's all good. Blah, 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 blah. And so, but I, then, but we're not, it's not fucking sustainable. It's like, how, how can we sustain? And they're so bloody cute. What? I'm just laughing because John Fregados, I said, uh, hanging with Ira at Canacrawl, he said, <laughs> Irish Republican Army? <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's no, what John. it stands for. <laughs> Jeez. So <laughs> for the last month, and it also made my gut feel bad. So I think, you know, if I had to, uh, if I was to survive, mm-hmm. if I killed my own, or if I had a farm that I knew, like, this is exactly how it's raised, yep. you know, and, and it's, it's done, not just humanely, but it's part of, like, sustainable living. Do you I would, grow, your, I would do you grow your own chickens? Yeah, why don't you have no, chickens No, I'm not in your eating backyard. chickens. Spoon no, okay, just fish. Are, you don't have to eat them. And you just again, collect eggs. You can teach hi. CC to collect eggs. You just, play, you just hang I out with them? Uh, those fun. Can you imagine? I can't even keep my office clean. Chickens take do, care do of themselves. Do you play ball man. with them? They do? Do they, do they play fetch? Shit on the ground. What's that? Hold on, hold on. What? Do your chickens play fetch? My chickens? I don't have chickens. You can teach a chicken to play fetch. You're the one that brought up the chickens. My aunt he's, has chickens. That's so why I'm saying this. I have no this. idea what we're talking about right now. My aunt has show chickens. Do you, do you think there are, there's like a million different types of chickens? Do you know that? There's ones with little fluffy feet and crap. She's got a bunch of weird ones. I'll, she what do you mean Mary. fluffy feet? I'll, I'll, I'll text her and try to get a picture, actually. But they're like, there's literally show chickens. They don't even lay eggs. I like show, show chickens. I've seen show chickens. Yeah. Right. Show and chickens. they're good looking They're cute. really good looking chickens. Yeah. Are they I, fixed? Uh, probably not. She's a vet. She doesn't every, like fixing every animals. Every year we go to the um, the Ancaster <laughs> Fair. Yeah, and they do the chicken Man, they're awards. Cool. You look at their whatever. feet layer. They don't. They don't have like claws. They have little fluffy things. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. And, and, and they really got the, longer fur. Yeah, and, and, and it nice comes thing. up to here. Yeah, yeah. And the peacock and the whole thing. No, a peacock is a different thing. Yeah. But a rooster, they roost. You <laughs> know, when I was younger, <laughs> my dad brought home some chickens mm-hmm. in a in an incubator. Uh, to eggs, right? How did we start to, talking about chickens? I don't know, man. Actually, but anyways, he, he, he there's a, a Jewish doctor. holiday. You know, my father was a doctor, right? I gonna, you want to know about a crazy Jewish holiday? Okay. Yeah, Okay, I I, tell your story, Al. No, my father was uh, a behavior modification doctor. Psychiatrist. With chickens? No. Uh, he uh, Here, was instrumental in light therapy, though, which is really cool. I like light, light therapy? therapy? Light therapy. That's cool. Yes. Yeah. So... So here, someone sent you some funny guidelines the other day. What was that? What's that? Doctor Watt sent you some guidelines. He wrote. Oh, did you get it too? <laughs> he told me about it. Yeah. I'll send you what he said. Oh, let's. We he can read it. Me and wrote. Don't read it say to his me. name. No, I'm not. Did you just say his name? No, I went like this. Oh, <laughs> don't worry. No, I did not. Say all right, his name. all right. Can't talk about names. But yeah, I no. asked him if I had his permission to republish it. He said, he "Leave said, out my name." He said, "Leave out his name." Yeah, I know. I know. He told me all about it. Uh, I'll just, read it to you in a sec. Into my head. So hilarious. Let's, you know there's a Jewish holiday over chickens, Al. News to me. And it's During, called? I'm not even going to say what it's called. <laughs> Chachen <laughs> these chickens? Kind of. <laughs> I'm not, I only know it in Yiddish, so I'm not even going to say, say it. it. No way. No? I, don't know I can't. Yiddish. It's too embarrassing. Other than schmuck. Okay, listen. Schmear. It's just, it's it just sound, sounds dumb. <laughs> so anyway, but listen to the story. It's just okay. as dumb as the chicken, like the whole thing. But maybe not. Listen, it's a good idea. Uh, it's a good concept. So, 
around, you know, we have a, a Day of Atonement in September. Yes. yes. Just before that, mm-hmm. the Jewish, the, the like Yom Orthodox Kippur. Jews, it's right? called Yom Kippur, yeah. My are birthday's trying to been atone on Yom for Kippur. all of their sins that they committed in the year before. And there's a variety of different things you have to do. You can't just, you know, we don't have confession, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. We actually have to go to the people we fucked over and ask for forgiveness. And you have to ask. And they yeah. could say no as long as you yeah. ask three times, then it's all magically disappears. <laughs> magically delicious. So, <laughs> Zum, da, 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 yeah, you're that's done. one way. And then there's a whole <laughs> bunch of other ways. But then, you know, a lot of our religion is based on some pagan rituals. So we were just talking about this last night. Yeah, it's a lot of paganism. So we take a chicken. You take a live chicken. You can use change too because you can either interact change the idea is to give charity okay uh so some people do it with charity but what you do is you wave this thing oh with change i mean not charity you wave this thing around your head saying a bunch of prayers it somehow takes up the sins that you weren't able to atone for some da 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 dum da da dum not the but like the godly sins like like the ones out of all these anyway whatever and then you kill the chicken and you give it to poor people so I, the idea is to give charity, but yeah. the chicken through give the idea is through giving this charity, you're atoning for the um, the sins that you weren't able to that weren't between humans, but were like the ridiculous ones, like oh, I ate non kosher food, yeah, okay. like those those ones. You see, anyway, my dad kept kosher in the house. You know, every rabbi in the world is going to be on yeah. this thing saying, "What the <laughs> hell?" Can we? Okay, let's can we get off religious get off talk and juice. get back to. What are cannabis. we talking about? We're supposed to be talking about cannabis. Talk to. Let's talk about this this article you got let's, in front of you. Do you want to take a break and talk about this after? What sure. time is it? Let's take a five minute break. You want me All to right. put a song on? Yeah, yeah put, put some, some music, music on, on, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and talk about that. Talk about some Tech Nine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Can we not? All right, you know, we Marley, got some music going on. You like. Uh, the-
better be by your side Cause I'm a ride or die Whether you fail or fly Why should I list you try? But when you walk out the
think we should go across the street. Start. Okay, yeah. so yeah. we, we are back, people. and Ira is hey. uh, got his microphone that he's uh, running around with, and I'm sitting here with Tyler. Hi, yep. Tyler. How's it going? Uh, and, and we can't hear each other, so I'm going to go like this. And I Ira can is, hear you. There's another building. I can see you. Here at the, the yeah. Canna Crawl. So Ira's going to go across the street. I should go walk across. And, and, yeah, and, and is that what I'm doing? There, maybe yeah. see if you can find Rena. Yeah, actually, I have no idea where Rena is. Maybe she's downstairs. I've never been. I haven't been downstairs quite. Check out downstairs yet, as long so as you I'll get cell phone reception. As long as, yeah, as, long as you've got reception, we're good to go, bud. Well, let, let me go check it out. We'll see if we got. We'll see if we got reception, and awesome. then I'll come back and talk to people up here, okay. and we'll uh, see what's going on. All right. So okay, but I, rem- you wanted to. Uh, you actually, there was one thing we were going to talk about just before we went on that break. You see that newspaper right in front of you? Yes, I do. What? Baldessero. You'll see that name written on there. I do. And is it Walsh? Tyler has it in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Mm-hmm. Tyler, just read the the. <laughs> Just read the big letters. Jesus. Hamilton's high priest see. of pot would love let it. Let me see it. No, nah, let me see <laughs> that the thing. Biggest letters. <laughs> Tell me what the biggest letters. Whatever. You guys are out here. Tucker. It's right there. Baldessero and Tucker. Black. Look, big letters right there. Uh, Take that. Oh, it's gone. Go for your walk, buddy. All right. All right. My, my, oh, he's my coming point back. Being, <laughs> no, I'm not coming back. I'm going downstairs. Okay. My point yeah. being. My point being that there are people that have been working on legalization since the 70s. Both those people have since died. Well, there's a dance party downstairs. There's something oh, really? happening down here. Hold on. I don't know what's going on. Oh, down here is the smoke lounge, I think. Can you hear that, that noise? Can you hear that? I don't, hear, I don't yeah, hear the noise. Hear, yeah, we can hear it. Yeah. Hold on. Let me go put that out. We got a DJ down. You know we have a DJ down here? Listen to this. No, oh, you're in the bunker. I can't even hear anything here. Oh, I hear it on the mic. Oh, nice. I like it. There's a, uh, you, yeah, that was pretty good. It's, uh, there's a dance party downstairs, guys. So I'm going to start walking and talking to people. I'm going to ask them what 420 means to them now because, uh, because that's, uh, I think, I think really important considering, uh, everything that, that's happened recently yeah. and with legalization. First so talk to some of the folks. the people that are that are working here. Sure. That are just hanging sure. out. Talk to the people that's, right to your left, the girl in the hat. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Okay, get it. Yeah, Paula's like, coming this, right up behind you, buddy. Can of fuse. Hi, Paula. Hi. <laughs> we're we're live right now. Can you can we talk a second? Because I keep keep her hands in your hand and then she can't Denise run away. Right now. <laughs> Paula, I know, but I like doing it to you. And and badness just happened at Gunshanita. So, why do you think it happened? Why do you think it was closed? The vape, the vape lounge was closed. Um, you can answer. There's a few different things. I mean, uh, maybe somebody didn't do their research properly. So do you think that it was because they still thought you were a dispensary? Uh, I think so, yeah. I don't think anybody really did any research to, sh- to see even see that we, you know, ceased some time ago. Because they closed down Hope at the same time, right? Yes, yes by locking us out of the property and the, uh, the what was found there was uh, all donations for Hope. Can you tell me a little bit about Hope? Hope is something me and Al came up with, and um, I'm sure he's already said it, but it's an acronym. Uh, <laughs> What's it stand for? You're, you're like... Hamilton we spoke a little Prevention Experiment. I thought he might. Oh, uh, yeah, we spoke about it a little bit before, but now we're standing with Paula. Oh, okay. And, uh, and she started with you yeah. this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How many people do you think you've helped throughout that time with Hope? By the way, I'm going to come and get involved with Hope. I'm going to, and I'm going to bring a research protocol. I've been wanting this for so long. I've what? Been wanting that for so long. I've been wanting to like somehow gather that data. I don't know, in, a, in even in form of a survey with a, just a number, just to say like, you know, what kind of opens do you use? What what is your, you know, 
do you use cannabis? Have you tried cannabis already? You know, and then just do every time, every month or something like do a follow up and say, like, have you used less opiates? You know, like I just would really like to get that kind of data so that we could like go and get real funding, you know. So that's uh, so I think that's what we're going to do. I don't know how we're going to get funding just yet. I'll figure, well, I'll figure that out, too. But uh, I think what you're doing is amazing. You know, most of my research is around decreasing opioids using cannabinoids. And so I think it fits right into Hamilton to have that. And I think we should do some research around, uh, around hope. What do you guys think up there? Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Paul, Paul is going to say something. I was going to say, I, I think what really prompted it was being where we are, right downtown Hamilton in the village. Um, we are like ground zero. We see it out of our door. We see it walk in the door. We have seen it, le- you know, responseless in the middle of the street um, and had to call ambulance so many times. Like you go in, you know, the park across the street, you go look in the bushes there. It's like littered with needles and tie offs and, you know, and it's, it's just right in front of our face. And all we keep hearing is how bad it is. All people do is write about it, talk about it, and it feels like no one is really trying to do anything about it, but prescribe more opiates. You know, you know, it's interesting you, it's interesting you say that, because in some ways I agree with you. So first off, Hamilton has, like per capita, probably the largest, for one of the largest problems in the world when it comes to opioid addiction. You can go on the Hamilton surve- opioid surveillance system. You can just see it. Every city has one. We have one. We have one here in in, uh, in Hamilton. You know, the average per capita death from an let's get out of the way. The uh, the average the average death rate for a can, for a Canadian for uh, for Canadians around opioids is uh, ten per one hundred thousand, and Hamilton is above that. We're between thirteen and fifteen per hundred thousand, and that's the that's the Canadian average. So we're above that. So you guys were actually trying to do something and prevent, you know, help people through that, and you guys were closed down. I'm hoping it was just confusion. I, I, I That's what I sincerely think it was. I think, you know, there's just a lot of confusion. Just given this, you know, given the, the climate in the industry, you know, and certain remarks that were made by the Premier, and, you know, um, it, you know I'm, I'm confident that, you know, things will change once we're able to clarify all that. Well, Paula, I hope so as well. Al, what are your thoughts? Uh, I, I'm waiting to walk through the door with Paula and, and the rest of the, the gang. That's what I'm waiting he for. He said he's, said he's waiting to walk through the door with you and the rest of the gang. Exactly what he said. Yeah. You know, one day that's going to happen. But, you know, on that, I'm sure there's a lot of people here. Everybody loves their Shatterizer. Uh, I'm, uh, there are a lot of people here who know what happened just yesterday or two days ago here. And, uh, are you guys familiar? Let's talk to these, these people. Do you know these people? No. Okay. I don't know them either. So we're going to get to meet people. Hi, my name is Dr. Price. I have a podcast called the higher estate. That's, that's the podcast. Hi. What was your name? I'm Tyler. I'm Jordan. Caitlin. Work here. Hey. Do you work here? No. All right. So are you guys familiar with what happened two days ago in Hamilton? I know that yesterday uh, um, uh, Rena put out, you, I'm sure you read that little notice where she said, you know, and I, I totally under, like, agree and understand, just wants positive vibes and all that. But two days ago, there's a couple like really, well, one specific important location in Hamilton that was closed down. We're familiar? No. Y'all from not around here. Oh, right on. We got Barry. Okay. So the reason that was sent out is because her lounge, uh, which was a vape lounge, not didn't not a dispensary. Yeah, but not a dispensary. Uh, doesn't sell cannabis. Doesn't. I mean, there's. Yeah, it's a vape. They call it a vape lounge. I'm the doctor here. I promote. I promote, I promote vaporization. So, um, by the way, guys, these guys are from Barry, uh, from Barry, Canada Fused, from Barry, Ontario. And uh, so two days ago, 
um, the Gunjanistas, which is a vape lounge just around the corner from here, was closed down. But what they were doing at the time of being closed down was they were rolling pre-rolls. Yes, understood that we shouldn't be rolling joints anyway. Uh, there we go again. That's why I'm here, because I'm promoting vaporization. Vaporizer company. Vaporizer. Vaporizer. Yeah, but it's not healthy not to. So... So I've changed. I started a mission this year. Good, Tyler just pointed it out. April is now April. Okay. Because would you say? Would you? Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use this. First, we'll talk to them before they start hating me. And I ask them the tough questions. Okay. Um. So it was closed down, and they were running a program called Hope, which was to help people that are uh, addicted to opioids and narcotics get off of those things and use cannabis. And they were rolling pre joints, uh, pre rolls for them that are free gifts, basically. And uh, anyway, it was a whole bad situation. But yeah, it is amazing that people are doing that. Actually, I wanted to get back to your point uh, about the idea that everybody wants to help, but it, it feels like everybody's talking about things, but nothing ever gets done. It's just like, okay, so what? And all the other articles I read is more opiates being prescribed and new, stronger opiates being created. And it's just like, whoa, hope. They did, yeah. They just developed, yeah, they just developed a different opioid. But so I'm, to that point, I think within medicine, we have a, um, we have a mandate to want to, and, and we have a need, a drive to want to help. And we want to help. So what do we say to you? We will do the best we can for you, right? There's a lot of we'll do the best we can, but nothing ever gets done. So the doing part usually has to start from a grassroots movement. So I think what you're doing is, is excellent. And that grassroots movement then can be taken over because most people, you know, when you, when, whether, whatever bureaucracy you're in, you don't have the ability to do execute or action what you want to because you have 16 other people that have to approve it by the time it happens you know nothing gets done so the grassroots movement the community movement is where most of the action gets done from because until somebody gives you the money or somebody sponsors it and says here's the money to run our program our way it takes a really long time so the movement happens at the grassroots right and so what you're doing is outstanding but now Oh, like I was, you know, it's funny, which the worst part of this, I know I'm the only one talking right now. The worst part of this though, was I was going to start coming this week so that they would have a physician around that they could talk to as well. But I know, we just never got to like connect because you're so, so, you're busy and it's like, we don't, you know, but I told Al, like Al, I was going to start coming on Thursdays or something, but it's on Mondays. I thought that. All right, let's pretend that didn't, I didn't just... Did you notice what I just did? I, okay, guys, can I just tell you what I just did? Yes. Yeah, I thought my mic was on fire. I don't know. I thought smoke. <laughs> I, was like, I started tapping my mic. Anyway, let's... All right, so let's... Okay, thank you, Paula. I'm all... That, that's it. My rant is over. I'm going to talk to uh, Canafuse. Uh, I, Tyler... Tyler, that's Tyler as well, redhead over there. He's saying, hey, what's up? Eric. Eric? Hey, Eric. You're from Barry as well. All right. So, who wants to be up with me? What does 420 mean to you? Somebody's going to do it. All right, Tyler. Put that in your ear. Hold on. Around there. Which, which yeah, Tyler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's talking to the other dude. Oh, he's going to take over their booth to me? now. I'm not taking, taking over. over. Wow, they've got, now. like, you, oh, is that cool which, if I sit what here? What type of products are they offering down there? What kind of products oh, do they have It looks like there, they right? have uh, Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. Yeah, that fruit Loops. I like Fruit Loops. Yeah, it looks yeah, really good. Them Let them explain them. Just stick that in one of your ears. Somehow, just smash it in. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. I've got Tyler here. Yo. So, Hello, Tyler. Tyler, here, put that in this year. I'll give him the right one. All right, Tyler, stick that in that ear. You got it. And I'll put this in this Snacks. ear. Snacks. Don't say that oh. word too loud. <laughs> what, did I, what did I say? Oh, okay. Fine. 
Um, Tyler. Yes. yes. So, Tyler's here from, uh, what's the name of your company? Canafuse. What do you guys do? We're a company based out of Barry. Um, we deal mainly with bath bombs, all kinds of edibles, um, herbal healing methods, all natural infusions. So what brought you to uh, Hamilton to, uh, uh, were you like, one, were you, did you go to any other places today, and what brought you to Hamilton? Uh, we didn't really go anywhere else today. We made this kind of a priority, but it was more so just, I'd say, the community that probably brought us here. Um, word of mouth, you know, we've heard good things. Um, and we, it, we're really excited to be here, yeah. yeah. It, it really is, like, uh, a really um, a really cool event, for sure. Um, and Hamilton's a really interesting community because it's a really close, tight-knit community. Everybody knows everybody. And, uh, yeah, and we love being part of it. So it's really awesome that you guys came from Barrie. And, by the way, this is broadcasting live on 420 Radio right now as well. Uh, right, Al? Right. You got that right, 420 Radio. Yeah, we're right. on YouTube. Check out um, The Higher Estate. You can check it out on YouTube. You can check it out on uh, iTunes. iHeartRadio. I don't know what he's saying. Spotify. Spotify. You can follow us on Instagram at canafuse.705. All right, you can do that. And then we're all just going to show things out. You can follow me at Dr. Ira Price. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just kidding. So tell me, what does 420 mean to you today, especially this is the first one after legalization? I think today it's, it's changed a lot over the last few years, of course, right, with, um, with everything that's changed, of course. I'd say from what it used to mean to, you know, as your typical – Say it. The common misconception of it to just get high and, you know, and, and get as high as possible on this. But after seeing the community around here, um, it's more, it's a lot more than that. You see people that are actually benefiting from your product and stuff like that, whether it's, uh, like you said, a vape product, which is a lot cleaner. I, I've dealt with people with lung cancer, and um, I've, I've demonstrated in front of them many times how much cleaner vaping is compared to smoking, right? converted a lot of people but um it means a lot more as far as health and uh wellness wellness yeah for sure for sure it, it's come a long way i can say that let's just say that do you think that it's do you think that it's changed now that it's legal from where i mean you, you mentioned the it used to just be like stoner culture yeah and i'm all tangled up to a to an extent yeah and now it's sort of taken on more of this health and wellness perspective, right? Uh, but do you think that this year it has the same sort of meaning that it did before cannabis was legal? To different people, maybe yes. Um, to this community. Um, to yourself. To myself, yes. You know, I feel like it's leveled up maybe. It's become more acceptable. Um, you know, I know I know a market just got raided in Toronto and shut down there, uh, Planet Paradise. I know that, but um, I feel like it's a lot more respected maybe now. People are seeing the benefits to getting people off of opioids, stuff like that, right? Do you think it's the, the same people that are still coming out? I think so, yeah. I don't think it's going to deter anyone, essentially. If you wanted, like, okay, so if you wanted us to know one thing about who you guys are uh can uh fuse great name eric you're over there you're pointing to eric okay let's leave Eric. do i need to leave eric out and bring jordan did i get that correct yeah. i got it correct that is the first time i've remembered three people's names guys well done i'm getting better I like it. thank you right. by the way it's tyler the it was awesome talking to you yeah. but i have We'll bring you in, yeah? Baby steps. Okay, Jordan. Uh, hi. Good. I'm Dr. Price. I, I run a podcast called uh, The Higher Estate, and we're, uh, we're live right now on 420 Radio with Al Rap over there. You can wave to the guy in the green. So if you had one thing that your company, if you, that you wanted us to know about your company, your culture, your 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 product what is it that you'd want us to know don't worry you don't have to hear anybody else you just have to hear yourself. 
Stop talk. I'm good. Yeah, okay. I'd probably say that we really and truly just want to spread good vibes. Like, if you look at our apparel, it's kind of got a galaxy look and stuff to it. So it's really pretty and stuff like that. And that's kind of what edibles make you feel like, like up in space. That's kind of our vibe. Just leave everybody with a smile and a happiness. You say it leaves you like like what cannabis looks like in space? No. Like, if you look at... (laughs) If you look at our apparel, do you see it's got, like, the kind of galaxy look to it? That's how cannabis makes you feel. You know what I mean? Like, you're in a galaxy. (laughs) I I, I honestly thought you were telling me uh, this is what they're bringing to space. I was confused. Okay. I I don't disagree. You know, we spoke spoke about Elon Musk. Do you remember that? Oh, look who's back. What are you guys doing over there? I'm going to put some uh, uh, diamonds in my shatterizer. Putting because diamonds I, in a shatterizer. I'm not smoking weed today. I'm, okay. I'm not smoking. Good. Thank you. Because the doctor so, keeps giving me shit. <laughs> yeah, I do keep giving you shit. So that is amazing. I'm gonna, let's go look. I'm going to go look around at your products. Literally, if everybody could see what we're looking at here. Maybe I will. Here, I'll put it on. I'm, I'm going to insta-live it so you can all see what's going on. How about that? So anybody that uh, wants to see what I'm looking at right now, um, go to... Well, I guess I shouldn't insta-live it. I could put it... I'll go insta-live, whatever. Okay, we're now live. Can you guys hear me up there while I'm live? 100%. Yes. Okay. We're see? Live. So we're live. I don't know why it paused my video. Maybe it doesn't go live, guys. Your video what do I be know? On. Yeah, no, you're just on a phone call. You don't you're not need on video. video. Oh, well, I'm no, I'm not, I'm talking about. Uh, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. You guys are messing me up. Yeah, well, right what's, over uh, what's there. In their bath bombs. I'm I'm interested in. Those I'm bath trying bombs. to show you, but I, I'm trying to show it? everybody what's in there. CBD. Oh, that's a good question. Hold on, I'm lost here. Anybody know how to use this thing? One sec. Okay, here we go. This is a, an amazing podcast. I almost know what I'm doing here. Uh, right? Totally. Okay, forget it. I'm putting you on my story instead. Say hi, guys. Hey. So, um, where's that bath bomb? Oh, okay. I thought it was uh, Kinder Egg. Those are their bath <laughs> It is Easter. It is. Why? I thought, I'm like, ah, it's Easter. Might as well pull it out. So, okay, so now tell me. Nice. What, yes. What's in your, uh, how many milligrams of, of THC, CBD, whatever? Tell me what's in your bath bomb. I thought, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Tell one second. What was your name again? My name's Caitlin. Caitlin, hi. I'm Dr. Price. It's okay. Sorry. Oh, excellent. So we were just chatting here with Eric, Tyler, Jordan, and now Caitlin. I got four names. It's that memory palace thing I was talking about. It works. Hey, oh, hi, who are you? I'm Hope, Canada Recovery. Oh, hey, Hope. Dr. Price. Okay. Um, what? And we we're just, Tyler asked the question. He said, what's in that bath bomb? What's in these bath bombs? So they're 100% organic. Some of them are scented and some of them are plain. So they don't affect your skin if you have scent allergies. Um, in the actual bath bomb is CBD and THC. There is baking soda. How much THC, CBD? There's 180 milligrams of both THC and CBD in each bath bomb. So of each one? Uh, yes, of each one. Of each one, yes. So there's Tyler. There is 160 milligrams of THC. And 160 milligrams of CBD yeah. in nice each balance. bath bomb. Each bath bomb. You don't want to eat well. You might want to eat that. Might be a bit salty. Salty yeah, because of the Epsom salt. Yeah. Good for you. Just a bit salty. So what else is in it? That's it. Oh. Yeah. That's that's great. Yeah. And so. So my here's the hard questions now. You ready? So I see I see this stuff. I'm a physician, I'm a doctor, uh, and uh, I treat patients. And when I treat patients with medicine, 
I know specifically what's in each piece, each medicine I give them. Even when I prescribe cannabinoids, I know what's in each one because I know it's been tested. And I can see the little pie and it tells me what's in it. How do people know, how do you know what's in it? Who wants to answer that question? Getting, it's all about getting your product lab tested and getting the feedback. Um, again, it depends how often you do it and what. Do you test it? Uh, once a year, yes. Oh, okay. Same strain constantly. It's all the same strain. So. See that, Caitlin? Eric's like, oh, I don't know. Uh, let me talk to Caitlin. Oh, you are. I'm not the equipment guy. The equipment guy doesn't know, but Caitlin, she knows. Okay, so you test your product. What is this here? Exactly what's in your bath bomb, but not packed together. So this is a bath salt. So if you're looking for a little bit more with your bath bomb, or if you're looking just for a little bit instead of a bath bomb, this is a perfect. So Kate, Caitlin, we're go, we've got we've moved on to Caitlin here. Caitlin, um, as marketing director, I'm just kidding. I don't know, but um, your product line looks excellent. What are we going to do with this product line now? What's your goal? My goal is to help people feel better and heal organically and just to get the word out that, you know, herbs are totally better than pharmaceuticals, and this is definitely a better way to go. I agree with you. Now let's take your product line. Where are we going to – Where? what is your goal for your product line? Like, where do you want to see it in a year from now? It's a legal world. Where do you want to see You don't want to see it anywhere but here? Or everywhere. There's a, Thank you. Hey, there's no end goal. The goal keeps going. It just keeps going and going and going, right? You always aim for bigger. But what is the bigger? Do you want to see, okay, so do you want to see this product line, which looks amazing, like, like I love whatever velvet. Okay. Vel red velvet. I love red velvet. And, uh, and I'd like to see, like, and I like good products to be on shelves in, in like stores, right? You know what I mean? In legal, in the legal market, that, that hey, if, if that's possible, yes? Al's got to go. Hold on. Oh, okay, well, Al can wait a second. Oh, is it like urgent, emergency? Yeah, uh -oh. Paul's waiting for him. Okay. Did I take Paul out? Is that the problem? Oh, man. Al, why do you have to leave? I have to go because Paul is my ride. I'll drive you home. All right. And I'll Where's home? I've got my car over by Gunjanese. Oh, that's, oh, dude, that's like a three-minute drive. I'll, I got you, boo. All right. So, back. I'm so sorry for that rude sorry. interruption. Hey, I was giving you a heads up. He was coming down. Thank you, Tyler, for that. But what I'm trying to get at is what is the goal of the market? I love the community. I want to stay in the community. I want the community to continue to exist. But if you're going to grow and you're going to get your word out there, where, how far do you want to go? Right, because it may just be this is the place you want to stay, which is great. But let me hear. I'd love to have my own store and have canopies, everything. Are you going to apply for a shop when you probably already yes. do? Yes. Yes, and when the time comes again, 100%. Good. See, that was the question. That was, that's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. What's that? Hold on, Eric. We've gone in as many legit channels as we can to cover our bases for now. Business name, master business license, things such as that. You have to wait for the government to give you approval to be able to even apply for edibles and things like that, even topicals. So, so what about? It is a waiting game. What about the idea of going down the route of, like, uh, I guess you can't just apply for a distribution license or an LD. Those things cost. Yeah, it just costs so much money. It's so crazy. So, Ira. Yeah. Are yes. you going to continue your walk now? Yes. Okay. Why? I'm, I'm having a great here. conversation. Uh, keep going if you want to. You guys, you know what, Al? All right, I think Paula left. You're walking home. No, Paul is right here. Oh, damn it. <laughs> nice okay, I'm try. just kidding. I'm going <laughs> to... All right, anyway, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. <laughs> Thanks. And I want to see... But it, we brought up a really good point. It's great to meet you. 
Uh, we brought up a really good point, and the point is that what is your end goal? Is your end goal to stay in the market, or is your end goal to be larger to get your products out there in a legal market? What do you think, Al? I that think was- that, that that's an individual goal for an individual company. Well, I agree, but so but I mean these products look amazing. They're well marketed, they're packaged yeah. well for and the most take, part. They, they take the time to tell people what's in it. So it's not like you're just buying a a cookie that you have no idea what the grammage is or, or how powerful it it's is. Just some, you know? No, but they've got you know, at least like I'm standing at another place. Pure cannabis. What's a great name because it's pure cannabis and uh you get it no forget it um and so i see like really nice package stuff like nice packaging nice branding i mean we got some syringes with you know distillate stuff well it's honey oil and yeah and 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 of course they're one gram of rso and we all have a friend unfortunately now who's uh Listen, we gotta. We just gotta. You know, you gotta be careful when you take a lot of RSO. But anyway, you really do. But you have really nice packaging. What's your? Uh, by the way, my name is Doctor Price. Uh, hi, uh, Doctor Price. I have this podcast here called The Higher State. And uh, and oh, let me say goodbye. Did I? I didn't cause you to leave, did I? No, not at all. It wasn't me. It wasn't promise? you. I promise. Okay, it's all your she's, fault, Ira. He, she's leaving. No, she's it's leaving. Your fault. She's leaving literally the moment after I just spoke to her for five minutes. Dude, you've been lost. Like, was like I lost? Now, Has that been a half hour? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, that's why he said time to move on. I don't know. You were there for almost 45 minutes, dude. Was I no, really? I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, you guys are so fuck with me right now. You were there okay. for the whole news hour. Yeah, I wasn't. Could, We're walking around. You could have watched so I'm looking, an can episode you, of Monster, whatever it's called. I don't know what you're talking about. Go on. Watch an episode of Monsters. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Of the crypt. <laughs> uh, Al, you, I take you as the guy who sits and watches TV. How do you not know this? I, I watch a lot of TV. I watch movies. Like what? What is like? Are you sci-fi? No, no, no. More a cop than and court. I watched court The Departed stuff. yesterday. What's that? I watched The Departed yesterday. You like the cop party? movies? Yeah. You watch, You seen The Departed? No, but I I saw The Dirt the other day. Okay. Watch The Departed if you like cop movies. Really? I can't hear you. Yeah. Anymore. I love that jacket. That's amazing. I can't even repeat what it says, but I love it. Take a picture of that jacket. I got a lot of people what? to send it to. What? Of what? Um, uh, <laughs> those, we can't say it out loud. But look here. Oh, okay. Oh. See it. It's nice. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. All right. So, back to the pure cannabis. Um, marketing looks on point. Looks really nice. We're here. What's your goal? By the way, just say your name and then tell me what your goal. You don't want to be on here at all? I can't give you any direct answers. That's the problem. No, what do you want to see happen? Yeah. First, tell me your name and then tell me what you want to see happen. You don't have to tell me your last name. No one no one cares. He's so unique, though. What's your unique name? My unique Make a name up. Sarah. All right, so Sarah from Pure so Cannabis, <laughs> a.k.a. not Sarah, what do you want to see happen? I want to see this shit fucking be able to be everywhere. Why do we have to wait for the government to make all this easy to do when we can be doing it on our own? So I, we, we certainly, I mean, the community Ira, certainly. Come and talk what? to Rena, and she's going to walk oh. with you to the other building. She's going to give you the tour. I'm in the, I know. She's right okay, here, I'm just going to finish this, okay. and then we can go. Okay. Sarah, a.k.a. I don't know. She doesn't know her name. She knows it and doesn't want to tell us, Are you which is good. Leave? Are you trying to go to the other side? No, I'm just oh, talking okay. to people. You won't, like, you won't like the other side. Why? Oh, oh, is everybody combusting? Is everybody... Is everyone's combusting on the other side? Should I go rip shit up? 
Can I go rip it up? Get okay, I'm going to go rip it up. Can I have a vape? I mean, I'm going to take the vape over and I'm just going to start sharing. Can we play Eye of the Tiger as he runs over? <laughs> oh, would you never say that again? Okay. But I just want to say her point Hang is on she minute. wants to see this. Forget it. I'm just joking. She wants to see stores. Dump, I agree dump, with dump, that, dump. by the way. Yeah, of course. I think we all agree with that. We just got to get there. Is this? Yeah. Hold on. Can you hold that, Rena? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, that's oh he's, yo, yo. he's getting high as shit, everyone. Just so you know. An empty vape. Oh. Throw, you vape. <laughs> throw me an empty vape. Here, I'll load it. Teamwork makes a dream work. Sit. So I was talking, so Sarah again. Let's go back to Sarah, because Sarah's saying she'd like. You know, why do we have to wait for the government? Why don't we just do it ourselves? I mean, the truth is, we're regulated in every in every industry has its own regulation. If we continue to just be the black market, uh, which it is, or gray, it's still black. Whatever it is, there's black and there's white. Uh, there's gray everywhere in between. If we just maintain that, do you think you're, I mean, the, I think legalization, I, I just said this earlier, I think legalization has, you know, effectively destroyed the black market really quickly. But they forget on the other side of this is a farmer. And so I think things need to be done. I just don't know how. We're working on that. So, soon. I'm waiting. Where did Rena go? She left me. Rena, don't leave me. He's like a toddler right Rena. there. <laughs> My favesies. I sure did. So, we're, uh, yeah, you know what's funny? Is I'm the only one still, uh, still standing around here. You're, uh, you're on your phone. I'm 55 years old. I'm overweight. And I'm doing my job. <laughs> That's awesome. Rena hey, Rena's gonna come take your vape. It's loaded. Rena's gonna take me across the sh- across the street There's and the we're gonna go tour. promote wellness. There you go. Uh, we're gonna we're, we go we're gonna promote rosin. wellness. We should press some rosin. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to convince people to vape. Say put that and, out. Put that out right now. I'm and, a doctor and I'm gonna have and people put, out, to put it out. That's right. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna have people put away their I'm going to ask them what they think about health and wellness inside there, actually. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Well, that looks good. All right. Rena, here we go. Rena, I need you to take me across the street. Rena, take, yes, me. I will. Rena, take me across right. the street because okay. we're going to go talk about health and wellness okay, okay. while people are smoke combusting. Oh, my God. No, while, while we watch them being combusted. No. Oh, what do you mean? Combusted. Com- who's combusted? They're combusted over there. Oh, it's done? No. Well, they might be done. I don't understand. It's not done. Uh, Rena. So, Rena, by the way, Rena is the organizer here. Make you sure might you put, say her, that. You put the mic in front of her face so we can hear her, please. I will. Thanks. I will put the mic in front of her face. So, Rena, tell me what you think. Like, we got your letter yesterday saying, you know, let's all have positive vibes because of what's happened. So, what do you think's going on here? And, and what... And how do you think it's going? I think it's going great. Let's hear. Uh, you know what? The climate is uh, really uncertain right now. It really is. And as much as the environment and attitude towards cannabis is finally changing, we have so far to go. We have so far to go. Um, you know, it, it just it's unfortunate that it seems that policy has not kept up or has not caught up yet with where... Um, where our mindset and where people and progression and culture is. So, um, yeah, we, we have a ways to go. Are you happy with the turnout? Tonight, yeah. Yeah, I am. You know what? Um, we, normally have much, we normally have much larger events. We decided uh, for today with uh, 420 and there being so many other things to choose from that we were going to keep it at a, a moderate size. And um, we're very happy with it. So far, so great. Oh, look at that, Paula. Have you spoken to Paula? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, to Paula. Paula. Can you tell me where we're Hi, going? Hi, Paula. <laughs> Over here. Where, where are we going? Hi. Whoa. We're, we're entering the lounge. The lair. Okay, so take it in. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in. He's in. 
So we've now entered the... Okay, can I just tell you what I just entered? My glasses literally fogged up as soon as I walked into this lounge. Yeah, there's coughing. There's... Wow, it's, this is like significant lounge action going on. Hi, okay, here, we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my wellness promotion right now. And I'm going to see how it goes. Hi, everyone. Hi. I can't hear you. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name's Dr. Price. I'm a, I'm a physician. <laughs> no, literally. I'm a physician. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, a medical, I'm a medical doctor. And I have a podcast called The Higher Estate. And uh, we work, I've been working with cannabis for about a decade now uh, to patients, with patients. Uh, I opened a clinic back in 2010 when nobody liked it, but I did it. And I opened a couple of them. Uh, but I promote wellness, and we've ch <laughs> I've changed the month of April to April. Thank you, because because I can't even breathe in here. My like my throat is burning. So I'm here to promote vaping. Because no, hold on. And I come bearing a gift. No, this is a. Uh, this is called WC4. It was uh, it was made by a guy by the name of John Chason. Anybody heard of that name, John Chason? He had the first LP in the country before uh, even Canopy was around. It was called Medi John. But instead, he went and lived on a yacht for four years. It took a group of people and found land race around the world. So this is a 42% THC strain called WC4 that he's made through DNA sequencing and tissue culture. So if you vape, anybody agreeing to vape for a moment? I, oh, thanks. You know what? Oh, by the way, you put in the WC4 in here, like my stuff, or you put in your stuff, Tyler? Uh, I, he's uh, off uh, having a uh, vape of his own. Oh, he is. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure it's mine. We'll find out. I don't know. I can't. Here won't even make a difference. So, give it a shot. Yeah. I don't think it is. I think that's something else. Well, he's a pumper. I know. Well, Tyler will tell us. Anyway, what I'm what I'm trying to promote is vaping. Because combustion is not good. Just pointing that out. Nobody cares. I love it. Nobody cares in here, Al. What's that? Nobody cares. I just turned it on. Yeah, nobody really cares. I guess it's a good... What's that? Yeah. It's not about Paul. Who believes cannabis is good for your health? Wellness. By the way, he stopped smoking. You, you vape? The vape rule? Yeah. Somebody listened for the month of April, and I was giving away vaporizers to people who did. They don't care. Uh, honestly, I can't even. I gotta get out of here. My throat is on fire. Hey, bro! My my throat is literally. What? Under him, bro. What happened? Cause, Cause I go to the gym. So guys, anyway, nobody cares about it in here. I'm leaving this place. Yo, nobody cared about my my uh, my plea for. I honestly can't even breathe. You want to talk it like? My throat is on fire. So this is the crew, crew hanging. I don't know. I, I know some of your crew. I, I know I know her. I don't remember how, but I do. I think you're maybe you have a son. Maybe I don't know. Is that how? Potentially? No. Anyway. Um. Okay. So I was here in that room promoting the wellness, the health of cannabis. And How many so, people gave you the bird? Yeah, no, everybody. Nobody gave a shit what I said. So, But now I'm in a different room, so I'm hoping for maybe a little bit of a different response. So you believe cannabis is first and foremost good for your health and wellness, yes? Yes. So why are we combusting it? Why are we taking something that is so good for us and burning it? That's what culture has So changed. I think, and when you vape, or when you combust cannabis, 
Yeah. Hi. My name is Dr. Ira Price, by the way, everybody. That's how I knew I knew you. And so I've been working with cannabis for about a decade. But when you combust cannabis, honestly, my throat is burning. I need to get out of here. When, um, when you combust cannabis, you get about 10 to 15% of the active ingredient, the cannabinoids. But when you vape cannabis, you get upwards of 50%. So you're going to save yourself a lot of money, too. All right. You want a patty or something? Oh. I'm not a cannabis infused no, patty. It's not. It's not. <laughs> are those Maddie's patties? Maddie's patties are delicious. They're, uh, They're not infused, yeah? Is it from Maddie's patties? All right. Maddie's patty? I don't know. Not today. No, not today. Maddie's patties is... You're awesome. Delicious. Look, she takes care of me. I know you're talking, man. Thank you, mister, very much. Oh. These are awesome. Oh, wait. What happened to my vegetarianism? I became a vegetarian. Yeah. Have a veggie option. No, I'm like a flexitarian. Okay. So like, no, I, I, no. I like, I know there's so many hungry folks over there. Here, what's this? Can I drink? Tyler would like a patty. Al. Al is going to get a patty too. Al, Al doesn't need a patty. I like Maddie patties. I would love a patty. I'd love a vegan. We're getting one. Awesome. Munchies. Patties, patties is lit. Yeah. Give me more munchies. Make me want to so I have to play that piano. Massive dabs. So I have to say that nobody in here cared. Gave a, gave a shit either. Even nobody gave like even a quarter of a shit Go about what I said. Around the rosin machine, pressing rosin. They'll probably be in the video. You know, honestly, I gotta get out of the. I mean it. It's great in here and all, but I literally my throat is on fire just walking into this room. Crazy. But it is uh, it is really cool. Some a lot of people in here who are awesome. All right, and there's chairs in the windows. Woo! Look at that strength. Well, that was uh, guys. If you you all have to go and see, like I don't know. They're like yeah, the I definition of a hot there. box. <laughs> it, so I literally walked in and tried to <laughs> vaping. Nobody can, like, not only did they not care, it was like they got angry at me for doing it. They're like, what? You're va- what? Okay, what's so, up, Doc? <laughs> yeah. But I literally went right in there and tried to, you know, tell them all what to, you know, that it's better for your health. They didn't it care. Is, it is better for you. Alex. Not even a little bit. All hey, right. Man. Where um, are you going? I'm going to take a little it's bit of a break. Announcement. Attention passengers. Get some music going. Uh, boarding now. Uh, and uh, we'll be back with one last sesh before we uh, expire the mic. Or retire it. Expire, it's not going to die. All right, we're done. And they're playing some fucking excellent music on lifestyleradio.ca. I hope I didn't sound too nervous there. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio.
I've been trying to do it right. I've been living a lonely life. I've been sleeping here instead. I've been sleeping in my bed. Sleeping in my bed.
show the world what they all want to hear. They just want to breathe. Over the seas on above the sky, stars will shine no matter what's your fire.
Because we're young and smart. <laughs> that was really good. You know what I learned about about being on the mic over there? What's that? It's ver- that you guys are very directional. What that, do you mean directional? Meaning that if you're not speaking right into your mic, it's like I'm not even listening to you. Well, these are these are directional mics. Yeah, are they? They're made for you to be right in your face and not pick up the surrounding. You know what so I can much. hear? Nothing. No, you won't hear anything. You don't well, really I need that. In. Well, only if... Could we use that for when you were on Skype? What the hell did you give me those for? Well, because I'm, I'm a cannabis user, my friend. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. So I can plug yeah. into here and then hear you. We don't even need these. No, now I can hear you better. Really? Yeah, because okay. I can hear you through that. Can you hear me through that? No, I don't need to right now. Oh, you don't? No, I can hear you because you're projecting to me. Oh, okay. Well, Project. I... Project. I'm projecting. Talk to me, Doc. Okay, so <laughs> we were just saying, because I was just saying that uh, you asked me if, oh, oh, who we're interviewing on Wednesday. Yes. We're interviewing uh, Unity. Unity is a, uh, a f- uh, women in cannabis uh, blogger Blogger. Yeah. who uh, does some video as well. She's st- going to start her own podcast soon, I think. Um, <clears throat> I have a whole bunch of information on her. Okay. That I'll read, uh, but I also know her. I know her quite well from just uh, being out out west. Um, I'm happy to call her a friend, and uh, she's uh, heavily involved in in cannabis in out on there. the west coast, which and is totally different than here in Ontario. Hundred percent different. You know, I mean, they got a big, huge thing going on on the beach down there today. Yeah. And we're sitting in a hall. We're very we. Quietly. Although I think that it was did that happen out there today. Yeah, okay. we're Although, yeah. The city, the city was kind of like. Ah, Our, you know. we're a very conservative province, and uh, sorry, but no, we are. It's a conservative province, uh, and so and we're yeah. So we're sitting inside, inside this place. We uh, do we want to say where we are or no? I mean, I guess we can. I don't know. Well, we're, it's already you know. Yeah, 10 I guess o'clock. it's everywhere. We're. I don't know. It's what's the. Uh, African Caribbean Community Center or something yes, like that? Yes, it's the ACCA, African AC- Caribbean Community Center. Oh, so I was right. So, no, Community <laughs> Association. Association. Uh, cool. And they were kind enough to uh, to rent rent the place. And, and that makes sense because cannabis is embedded in that culture. Well, I mean, I think cannabis is in a lot of cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I just, uh, I think, is it, I think it, the community here is progressive and... Uh, and and I know that Rena's part of the community here, so they, yeah, they were very kind enough, very but much it's, so. Yes, it's amazing because you see some elders walking around here as yep. well, and that was really awesome to see and just you know experiencing. I, you know, it's almost ten o'clock, and uh, and 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 it's still kind of packed in here. The, you know, like I said earlier, uh, I noticed waves at, at our market, and and it's like every half an hour a new wave comes in, and sometimes there's. You know, twenty people, and then there's sometimes there's thirty people. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's uh, it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool experience uh, to see all this and be involved. You know, <clears throat> you know it was strange for me to uh, 
to oh right you're not on headphones it was strange for me going across to the other side where everybody was combusting and uh trying to promote health and wellness it actually opened my eyes a little bit you know because that was stoner culture is exactly what i was looking at over there and did they look at you like the the old man they look not only did they look at me like the old man even one pointed it out and said it he uh and was like yeah that's the young generation you're an old man or whatever he said to me but it, it also um, helped me see the, a little bit that, you know, stoner, stoner culture is still, like, out there. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For and it's, sure. it's just as biased as, uh, you know, the medical culture I, I, in its own way. We, we, we have a lot of different people come in the lounge, different cultures as well as different ages. Uh, we've got some people in their 80s, and we've got some people in their 20s that come in. Yeah. And they are totally different, but the same. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? Totally <laughs> I don't know what different, but the same. <laughs> the same culture. Oh, right. But brought up differently, so oh, think right. differently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make sense. You just realized, I realized I'm old. I didn't just you? realized that standing over there was, uh, and I'm trying to figure out what you're saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was awesome. That conversation we're Smokey's having. Smokey's right deals is here. So, I, I mean, all I was really trying to say was that <laughs> stoner culture is just as biased as and on their side of the wall yes. as the medical side or the pharmaceutical side is on their side of the wall. And that the middle path is truth and we're somehow we got to bring both sides into the middle. I enjoy sitting in parks. Listening to the kids talk while they're sitting there smoking a joint and going, Oh, yeah, man, this is so fucking cool. Yeah, what is it? Uh, Kush. Right, (laughs) right, exactly. You know nothing. And then you have a conversation with them and they're like, Oh, yeah, I know Mark Emery and I know this guy. Yeah, sure you do. I know all about this and blah, blah, blah. It's like they won't even listen. No, they they don't want to listen. Nope. They know You know, it's interesting because I even see a a large difference between the group that's in this building, which is the vape, like, and you can vape in here. Yep. But I see a large difference between, like, I don't know, even what's in here. Older or younger over there? Uh, no, they're younger over yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're way younger over there. I've seen a pretty good <laughs> wide range of people walking around, different ages. Oh, yeah, for that, sure. What you would expect. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, certainly. I, I mean, it's it's really it's really great to watch this whole thing. Um, well, because you're a people watcher. Yeah, no, that's that's true. Yeah. Okay, so then here's my... Here's my Here's where we were going to finish off. We were talking about uh, this weekend or next weekend is O'Cannabis. Yes. Next O-cannabis, weekend is O'Cannabis. Yeah. I'll be giving a talk, actually. I'm actually going to moderate. I'm moderating the uh, medicine meets or cannabis meets healthcare, uh, which is on Saturday. And I'm giving a, to- a talk on uh, the state of cannabis uh, research in, in uh, opioid reduction. So I'm going to be talking about oh, the uh, opioid epidemic, which and is at the highest in in the world here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Canada's wow. for sure. Ontario's like for sure right up there, and then Hamilton like pretty much takes the cake in Ontario. So overall, it's it's like a thing. Yeah, they've got uh, they got something going on downstairs. I think the oh, DJ's starting up. Oh yeah, probably. No, they've been downstairs starting oh, up the whole time. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking there next week. And uh, and I want to I want to talk about hope. Okay. I want to talk about hope in there. How do I do that? Well, I guess we have to have a little meeting between now and next week. Yeah, because <laughs> if I'm talking about the opioid thing, then I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm totally gonna do that. Um, well, I think they're gonna. That. I think we're getting kicked out. Are we getting kicked out? Yeah. We're, watch, Rena's coming up right now. Watch. Rena, and Rena's going to kick us out. No, she's bringing food Rena's, and munchies. Rena's, Rena's kicking us out. That's okay. Oh, okay. oh they're going to do a raffle. Oh, we've got a raffle. That's a awesome. A raffle. What are we raffling off? What are we raffling? Oh, we need bags. I just ate a French fry. How are you? I ate one of her French fries. So, guys, okay. um, 
we're going to have to move on from that. We're going to have to what? Are we moving on? We can move on until they're ready to go and we can take another little break or we can just listen while they're I doing this. I think we'll this. just listen while they do that. All right. After the raffle, we'll shut her down. I got a... Uh, I think we do that. I think it's been a good night. What do you think, Al? Oh, well, Jesus, we've been here since 7. Have we really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Well, we really have. You know what this reminds me of? What's that? You know when uh, those people do the New Year's Eve thing in New York and they just sit around and talk shit for a couple hours? So can I be Ryan Seacrest? Yeah, that's that guy, <laughs> Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> do you want to be Kathy Lee Griffith? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Yeah, you know exactly who I'm talking about. One thing we have to do, though, is I have to bring my speaker so that we can project this out there and people can hear us. I, you know what the best part, Al? Every year we do this. We've only done it twice now. Yeah. But every time we see and each I've other, done it we both talk times about that. Yeah. yeah. We keep saying we're going to do that. I have a speaker in my car, but my cords <laughs> and my microphones are in, in the lounge. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I need to get those headsets anyways, right? We're going to get headsets. We're going to get all this set up so that it sounds good for the people and, and we don't look like fools when we're out. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a good idea. And my sister's messaging me so that I, she's keeping my dog for the evening. Well, that's nice. <laughs> what kind of dog? Uh, you've not been in. Uh, Rosa comes with me into the lounge oh, okay. on Thursdays. And she is a Mastiff Lab Husky mix, and she's my bitch. I don't know what that means. She's about the size of an American boxer. I have a boxer. Do you? I, I love do. that brand. That brand. That breed. You love the. I love yeah. the brand of boxers. I did some research. Do, what do you have? Do you have a try or? I have a. Um, I have a white boxer and a, and a fawn boxer. Oh, yeah. And they get along really well. They're amazing. You know, uh, I did research because before I got busted. You know their names. No. Max and Ruby. Max and Ruby. I think I've seen you post about them. Yeah, yeah. Um, before I got Buster, I was looking at master at, at, at boxers, the American boxers. I got American boxers for dummies, and I read it cover to cover. And I learned that the American boxer specifically is one of the top ten family dogs. Yeah, it is. Because... They're so timid, yeah, but protective. Yeah, it's amazing with kids. Like, the boxer is amazing. Yeah, amazing with my daughter. Yeah, aggressive with other dogs or no? Aggressive? No, no, not at all. They have no. The problem is they can't. The reason they box ish is because they have no teeth. Yeah, they have no mouth. They can't bite. They have a recessed recessed jaw, so you don't have to worry about about getting bit. That's why they slap. Yeah, so that's why they do this little boxing thing. But they're so adorable. But they're like finicky little things like uh they uh like mine will run away from its own shadow but people think <laughs> it's scary so rena what are in these bags they're giving they're doing a raffle now guys they're doing a raffle now there's raffle stuff coming what 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 no, we don't As want Amy that. says. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. And we've got uh, some other CBD candy. Who can... There's some other wow. Wow. There's a free roll in there. That's amazing. There's a lip... That's uh, amazing. <laughs> I'm going to get you some. All right. Chapstick. We got chapsticks and gummies. There's hey, another... Who's... See, look. There's another wave of people coming in now. It's packed. Yeah. You know? One of the things, one of the things I was telling, uh, uh, Doctor, the doctor, forgot my okay, name. Okay, we're gonna take a break here oh, and and listen. Oh hey, we're gonna do the raffle right now. Okay, let's break. We're gonna listen. Are we live? Happy four twenty. Stay healthy.
Can you hear me now? There you go. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's better. So I was just saying, thank you so much for coming. Just okay. shows how much Turn you and see our... and support craft. <laughs> uh, craft is, is the way of the future. And we need to show the government and everyone that this is very important. This is a, an important part of our lives. This needs to be preserved, an important part of our culture. So thank you guys. Thanks so much for coming. Whoa. Hold on, are we doing this? We're not going to stay live for 50 gift and, uh, bags. We'll turn this off. I think we'll wrap up. Yeah, I yeah? think we'll wrap okay. up. We'll wrap up and uh, we'll let Rena do her thing. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Hey, guys. Uh, Thank you, Ira. Thanks. Hold on. Wait, wait a sec. Thanks, everybody. I can. They can't hear me. They're fine. Uh, check out O Cannabis. I'll be talking there next Saturday. Check out my Instagram, Dr. Ira Price. Check us out on... Uh, um, YouTube and um, iTunes and Spotify, uh, the higher estate, and hope everybody has an awesome evening. Happy 420, and stay safe, be healthy, stay well. Happy vapor, vape, don't combust. Peace. So what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Why not? Trying to get on this lifestyle radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio.